minutes late. <laughs> um, I was trying to get everything. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get my Oculus headset to work on stream. Because it's going to be really, really wonky. Um, but we're going to try it later. Hopefully everything is good. Let's make sure I muted that tab. Okay. Just want to make sure that I'm like on the proper <laughs> on the proper thing for everything. Cuz yeah, I uh I was having a lot of technical difficulties with um not with this game. This game has been fine. Um, I've been having technical difficulties with my VR headset, trying to figure out how to get it to work. Um, I'm gonna put the volume up for me, because it's kind of low. But yeah, we're gonna be playing tonight, um... Oh gosh. I need to fix this one. Um... Fix that. There we go. Hopefully everything is in the proper tag. Yeah, I think this just came out. Let me actually double check real quick. It's, uh, what's it? It's hooked on you. I know I, I don't play it very often, but Dead by Daylight has always been a very interesting game. Uh, like, lore-wise. I really love watching all of the, <laughs> the lore videos. On like all of the uh, killers, um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I am a little bit. I haven't checked yet, but <laughs> I'm hoping it's EOS safe for the most part. I didn't exactly check but hey <laughs> let's hope i wonder if there there might be like a specific stream settings oh hey welcome hello china's maybe okay we have volume language oh i can link my account for dead by daylight Dude, the art. Ah, oh, I love them. <laughs> Look at them. Okay, who are we going to go after for this one? I really want to do... Uh, I think her name is... She's the Spirit? I'm like double checking everything right now. I think she's really cute. The Huntress is also like a buff mom lady. 10 out of 10. Love it. Ah, uh, yes. The, her thing is called the well, she's called the spirit Yamaoka's haunting power allows her to teleport from one place to another without being seen it's pretty interesting you don't play this so it'll be new well dead by daylight is like how do i best describe it Dead by Daylight, the actual game that these characters are from, is a game where you basically can play as the killer or, I guess, the survivor. And if you're the killer, your goal is to, you know, kill all the survivors enough times. And then if you're the survivor, your goal is to, I think, not only survive, but you have to, like, turn on generators and stuff to help you and everything. <laughs> it's way more complicated than I'm making it out to be, but... It's a very fun game to play and a very fun game to watch people play, but I'm not very good at it, so I don't play it here. But yeah, we're gonna get started. Ooh, I'm excited. And then after, we'll try and switch to VR. I gotta see how the heck to do it, because I'm having issues uh, streaming it to my computer. I was able to yesterday, but it's not recognizing um, the device, which is not good. So we'll move that over there. We'll probably play tonight for like 
two or three hours just because I have another dentist appointment tomorrow. Ew, gross. I hate the dentist. But anyways, let's get started. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about TOS stuff. So like if I randomly like if something pops up and I hit the <laughs> I have like it hot keyed right now to like disappear it out of frame. Oh, no. <laughs> there we go only that one <laughs> get rid of screen ignore my my stuff there's nothing of importance here it's fine window capture display capture Oh no, the game capture. Um, haha, there we go. Cool. <laughs> Follow me, get free Jelly Boys. It's about 300. I actually don't know how the channel points work. I don't know. I don't think I can actually give them to people. I think people just earn them through chat and stuff. But anyways, let's get started. New game. Oh, man, I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> but we got it just in case. Oh, before we start, what shall we call you? <gasps> okay. We're going to be... We're, we're just going to go our regular name, Celeste. There we go. Hopefully you guys can hear it pretty good. I'll put the volume up a little bit if you want. Oh, is loading? The music is so like chill. Three hundred for free somehow. Well, I think you get three hundred from watching. Oh. <laughs> cough 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 okay so the story is that we i think we we stumble onto a beach or something like we have we have amnesia basically you wake up on the beach soaking wet salt water stinging the inside of your throat as if you've nearly drowned water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air you have no memory of how you got here in fact you can only remember your own name but not where you came from or a single fact about your life what you do know is that despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. Cough, cough. <laughs> Whoa, really, really went down the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute or can I go on? Because I can give you a minute. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> Endless time, really. Oh my god. <laughs> the ocean and eternity if you catch my drift. Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, Celeste. May I continue? Yeah, continue. Please go on, sir. Okay, then. Uh, as I was... Cough, cough. As I was saying... <laughs> you look down at your feet, ankle-deep in crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Oh! Gross! Oh, no! A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit a stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other ick. Ew! Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. Bro, I don't want to keep looking at that. What will you do? Dig up that face. Close your eyes. Run. Okay. What do we do? What do we do? Mm. Close your eyes. Dig up the face or run? Shoot. This is hard. Okay. What would real life Celeste do? What would she do? Close your eyes. On it. <laughs> Me. 
But I don't want to drown. Dig up that face. Run. Probably run. You turn away from the wretched side and begin to run. But the beach, it's endless. Despite how far you run, you get nowhere. Exhausted, you stop and look behind you. Your footsteps erased by soft blue waves. You turn inland. Considering your lack of options, you've got no choice but to walk into the brush. However, the beauty of the beach is not shared by the darkness of the palmy woods before you. There's nothing inviting about the shadowy forest. Terror freezes you in your steps. Why are you trying to run away? This is paradise. No, man, I don't like the ocean. <laughs> You're here to enjoy yourself, don't you know? Have a little bit of fun. Take charge of your own experience. Well, that sure was weird. <laughs> the voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right, but you're pretty sure you remember learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. <laughs> your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. Oh, gosh. Wilson? When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. Little help, please? Oh, the Huntress. Hey. Not a big fan of the ocean. Welcome back. You turn around when you see what's waiting for you. Your jaw just about hits the ground. Bruh! Look at that beauty! <gasps> oh, wait. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at her! We're going for her, guys. We want... Ah! Oh, I want spooky spirit lady so badly. Oh my gosh, spooky spirit lady, please be my wife. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Bruh, spirit lady, please. <laughs> I want her. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Your heart begins to raise. Curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at those casually dressed, let's call them killers. I don't know, not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you're completely paralyzed. Hello? There are weird days and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at this monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy ass monsters, though. <laughs> What do you do? Bruh. Toss it back! You bend down and grab the ball. It's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. <laughs> when you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in Huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful! <laughs> I love tough women! Huntress muscles ripple as she grips it in her hand. You look her up and down and consider what it might be like to be held tightly in those strong arms. Warm, perhaps. Maybe a little sweaty, but that's okay. It's natural. Bruh. Can we appreciate? We're appreciating. Respectfully. Respectfully, guys. Try hard much? Black. <gasps> hey! They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. Is she gonna be a tsundere? I swear to God. <laughs> if she- if spirit is a tsundere, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> when you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened, worried, excited? I refer to them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they're looking very appealing in their own way, and nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, Celeste. You were made for this. <laughs> well, geez, if the spooky ocean voice is not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. Bruh seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. Oh no! Spirit Sundere Pog. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, okay, wait. Let me fix something real quick because I'm kind of lagging a little. It might be I was doing some stuff for with my VC face yesterday and I might have put myself on like the freaking highest and most insane settings. 
by accident. Oh, <laughs> cha. Let's do that thing. Uh. I'm fixing myself, guys. <laughs> Real quick. Um, boop. Boop. Okay, there we go. A lot better. I had myself on the highest settings by accident. Don't know. I mean, I, I know why I was doing stuff yesterday. I was testing things out. Ooh, hydrate. Yes, I will gladly hydrate. I'm excited for this. We're going for spirit first, man. <laughs> posture check. Posture check in. I think I'm good. I'm standing up straight. <laughs> okay, let's get this started. You need to do that yourself. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder how much lag I have. Oh no, I forgot! Yikes. I forgot to set the subtitles for today. I'm gonna have to do that later. Anyways, let's continue. We derailed the volleyball game. Oh gosh, you derailed the game just by showing up, nitwit. Oh no, I'm scared. And I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's best to just go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. I don't like his eyes. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. What? What do you mean, existence? Oh, no, I have not. Did anything new get announced? Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. A huntress might be, like, coming in for the kill with my heart. Oh, gosh, it's so hard to pick. <laughs> What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? Deep sigh. <laughs> that was Wraith. That sigh means he was done with the game, too. <laughs> I went totally silent. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the new mechanic? Oh, I didn't see. Well, check it out definitely after we play some of this. Let me make myself a little bit. There we go. Oh, Wraith ain't... <laughs> ain't bad to look at, okay? I'm sorry. I said it. I said it. He's buff. He has abs. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why this slack-jawed moron is here. I don't like Trapper very much. I just want to know. Can I kill them or not? Wait, no, please spare me. Bruh. No. Uh, the waifus. You know you can't. Oh, Huntress. At least not yet. Oh, Jesus Christ, Huntress. No, please. Oh, yeah, not yet. Hey, Celeste, you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of free time for that soon. Right now, this group has some questions for you. But be warned. Answer quickly and answer well. Oh, no. I'm not good at this. I'm going to be murdered. Oh, no, no, no. This is a time quiz and it'll be very important later. I have not brushed up on my Dead by Daylight facts or information or anything. Oh no, we're gonna die. Very important. Can I save? <laughs> we're saving right here. Just, just in case, just in case. Settings. Okay. Oh man, I'm scared. I'm scared, I'm scared. We're not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. Can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? <laughs> oh no! Um, like average. Pretty average, I think. Just another face of the crowd. Another normal, meaningless, meaningless life in an endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself. Like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. Huntress thinks we're cute! Huntress thinks we're cute! If you could have any superpower, what would it be? If you approach in real quick. 
Invisibility. Um, invisibility? Same, although sometimes I think I already am. <laughs> what was your best subject in school? Oh man, getting a better look at spirit. Uh, history. History? Nice, it's important to know what came before so that we are not doomed to repeat humanity's mistakes. I mean, we will anyways, but still. What's your favorite animal? Uh, dog. <laughs> dog? You look absolutely adorable in a little puppy mask. Thanks, Huntress. What's your favorite color? Huh? Blue, three-day-old. Blood red. Red? Some call it the color of love, but love is just another word for pain. Yikes. What's your dream job? Oh, she approaches so quickly. Astronaut nightclub promoter. Not working at all. <gasps> Astronaut would be cool. I'd be pretty amazing to be an astronaut, I think. It's hard to imagine being farther away from anyone than floating in space. The cold, inky vastness of nothing forever. Best flavor of ice cream. Vanilla chocolate horse. Chocolate! My favorite flavor is pain. I don't... Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla swirled with pain. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor I ever conceived myself, but enough about ice cream, am I right? Hold on a second, this reminds me. I am right, always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, narrator? You rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island, even for faceless voices. You're gonna kill the narrator? Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Mint. The best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. I think the ocean is gonna murder me. <laughs> oh, bye, Mr. Clonsane. Have fun. Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm Trapper. I'm pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. I don't like losers. If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Wraith. Oh, that's so mean. Hi, I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like everyone else. I like nice people and low big dumb idiots. <laughs> okay, let me just appreciate for like five seconds. I love her. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time, but the things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering and society's carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subservient to those in power. It's better to choose to just not take part. Holy heck. Hello, welcome. Jeez, it's like she was downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh no, wait, I'm remembering Spirit Story now, and that's almost exactly what happened. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Grow a body. What? I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog body. Gosh dang, Trapper being mean to my waifu. How dare. <laughs> That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Ew, really? That's disgusting. <laughs> That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. <laughs> for the first time ever, I agree with Wraith. Let's move on. Otherwise, we'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. Oh gosh. I'm scared. Oh, probably because I think Seraphim gifted a bunch of subs before. <laughs> if we're done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow, for once I actually agree with the meathead. I say we go to my yacht. It's the massive boat docked nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him, he just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth, the way it's wanted needlessly and the cruelty and engenders. What about hanging out by the pool? I find the water calming, simply beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. 
Are you all serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out at right here. I'm tired, and besides, I hate being in the sun. I wanna go to the lounge with the spirit lady. Volleyball, the beach, lounge, the yacht. I think it'd be great to relax for a second at the lounge. Choppers sound so nude being a butt. To kick up your feet, look out over the ocean, and relax on your own terms. Who would want anything else? Dry, comfortable, enjoying a cool drink on a hot day? It's the best. I mean, what kind of fool, what kind of monster, what kind of mask-wearing psychopath would finally be granted a break from constant grinding of chasing and fighting to get ahead, and then choose to exert themselves in, quite frankly, any way whatsoever? Why am I the only one who gets it? It's time to stop living by their rules. I won't do it any longer. She got spooky. Yeah, we should probably give her a second to calm down. Hold on! Who are these people? Claudette and Dwight. For just one moment. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinators. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. <laughs> They're the only help remaining on the island. This place we call Murderer's Island. Cue dramatic musical flourish. None of the others survived. Oh no. Ahem. Survived the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall here to four refer to them as survivors with a capital S. These two have worked here a long time. So very long, I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry. Anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to present you with your options whenever possible. And don't just run off to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our jobs. The most you could do is help us get off this I Why? Yes, pardon me. Please follow us. Hey, narrator. Yeah, that's something I can help you with. Those two, Claudette and Dwight, did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? <laughs> escape them? Oh, no, 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 no. I think you're mistaken. Seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that. Yes, that's true. He was. But he just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway. A couple miles south of here. It has much fancier accommodations than this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits. Quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. <laughs> This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. It's time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter, mostly. When I agree with them, not like that other island. So what it will be? I want to do this one. Oh, no, wait. She, she was angry. Hey, spirit, my girl, my waifu. <laughs> Finally, freedom from the perp preposterous premise that the four of us would be engaged in some sort of thrilling two-on-two -two volleyball match. Spirit looks at you from beneath her gigantic sun hat. She takes a conspiratorial tone? What does that mean? Oh, hey, Alpha, welcome! I don't know whose idea of volleyball was in the first place, but I hate them. I tried to feign a sprained ankle, but everyone already knows that I technically float above the ground, so nobody believed I was even putting any pressure on my joints in the first place. She's got, like, shards of glass in her. Then I tried to annoy everyone by not giving a crap, and when that didn't work, I tried whining, and when that didn't work, I threatened to kill every single person on this island, but... It turns out I'm not the first to toss those kinds of threats around on this island. Oh my gosh, she's so cute, I love her! How am I feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, yesterday I was really out of it because of the dentist and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I have another dentist appointment tomorrow. Gross. Ew. Nasty. Don't like the dentist. Anxiety. <laughs> so, thanks. I guess for getting it called off. Are we threatening to end each other again? 
Now it's Dwight who takes on a conspiratorial tone, his eyes shifting as he slips into a loud whisper. Please just make it quick. Jesus Christ, Dwight! <laughs> oh my god. Is what you'll be saying when we get behind the bar and make you a drink of your dreams! Ah! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hilarious, right? Right, Dwight? Yeah, right, right. So, what do you be having? Oh, gosh. Sangria, Scotch Rocks, French and Daiquiri, Vodka Soda. Bruh, let's get turned. Something fruity but refreshing. Hold the coconut run. Uh, Sangria, maybe? My pleasure. That sounds nice. We used to make drinks like that back home. Well, not we exactly. I watched someone drink a drink like that once. They looked happy. Poor Wraith, he just seems so depressed. <laughs> oh my god. Now's your chance to be the one with the drink. What do you say? This is some sort of juice for a child. Are there children hiding about? No, it's for adults. The kind who like, you know, tropical fun. Oh, I see. Huntress really seemed to perk up at the idea of kids being around and is bummed to hear there aren't any. But I'm quite glad it's just grown-ups on this island, personally. Little ones should definitely not be exposed to this. Not my cup of tea, but okay, sure. We can still use it for a toast, yeah? To new adventures. To new friends. To, uh... Clink. Did you just say clink? <laughs> no. Since we've fulfilled your requests, it's time for you to return the favor. What does that mean? I should have known there was a catch. Icebreaker time! I swear, had I known they'd pull this kind of fox enthusiastic community building crap, I'd have suggested we attempt to walk to the lowest point of the ocean before I ever set foot near this bar. <laughs> you don't think it could be kind of fun? A little fun? Never mind, I hate it. This sucks, but it could be fine, or whatever you say. Has anyone seen my hat? He was wearing a hat? I don't remember seeing a hat. Um, Sunday, hopefully, is the next training stream. I've literally never seen him in a hat. <laughs> okay. Oh, if we must make small talk, I'm at least picking a topic before we end up being forced to do some lame improv game that nerds learn at their non-sports after-school activities that I definitely never did because I'm no nerd. Oh, <gasps> she's a nerd, guys! <laughs> Where's Trapper? <laughs> Methinks a certain someone doth protest too much. Sitting here on this beautiful sunny afternoon, warm sand beneath the cool fog beneath my severed feet. The topic I choose is books, novels, comics, fiction, or non. Reading is the only real escape from the inescapable horror of life. The escape into your mind. I... I like her. <laughs> a groan rolls through the crowd. Not a lot of readers here. I'd imagine based on that response, they were much more enthusiastic about drinking. Considering the situation we're in, it seems an appropriate time to ask you. Celeste, what's your just desert island book? The one book you'd bring with you if you were, well, on an island like this? Oh, and it has to be classic horror, for reasons that should be obvious. She means because this is an island of horror villains, and also those books are all in the public domain. <laughs> classic horror? Oh, it's gonna be like The Mummy, Frankenstein, all those. Nothing too modern. Humanity has really gone soft these past hundred years. So what's your favorite? Dracula, Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Probably Dracula. Dracula is one classic that's still scary. To be seduced by some beautiful stranger only to learn later on that they're an immortal villain. It's downright thrilling. Ooh, ooh, did she like it? Did she like it? Well, I guess, but I was going to say that despite the deviant behavior of Dracula and the threat of possible danger or even death that he poses, he could, can't help but get turned on by the liberation from the status quo that he represents? Same here. So wh what if some old doctor says he's a bad boy? You're supposed to reek like garlic and sleep alone? Who do they think would buy into that? If you're going to be trapped in the nightmare that is undead life eternal, which I know a little something about, you could do a lot worse than great clothes, a castle, and a lover who doesn't take shit from anyone. The scariest part of Dracula is thinking that no one will ever be quite as interesting to make love to as a vampire. Oh my gosh! She really... I think she really likes Dracula. 
enough about these old stories that belong to someone else. I think it's time to make up some new stories of our own. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is she gonna murder me? Before you know what's going on, Huntress is waving an empty vodka bottle in the air. A devilish twinkle in her half mask covered eye. Might I suggest something a little naughty? Let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Great idea. What? What? Excuse me, sir. Where the frick did he come from? Sir? I thought it was just... What? Um. I don't know how I feel about this. The trickster. Great idea. Trickster, isn't it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the one who gets to make the rules, so... I'm not sure who I'm asking. But I wasn't ready for this. Well, hello, and who is this new fan in the waiting? Sir? Sir? Excuse me? He looks a little ugly. Isn't he supposed to be based off of, like, a... He's supposed to be, like, a serial killer, like, K-pop idol, isn't he? I was not expecting him to show up out of the blue all of a sudden. He's very distracting. <laughs> Beat it, hack. I don't know what's the harm in inviting one more person to join the circle for our game. Oh, I can't stay. I was just saying it's a great idea. While also teasing the secret trickster ending. There's a secret ending? Sir? No, but we're going for... We're going for the spirit. Because she's waifu material. I got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. Toodaloo. The rules are simple. First you spin, then you swap spit. That is... Oh god, wait, are we gonna freaking make out with someone? He just said cap. <laughs> but let's be clear, this ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time. But in a classy way. All makeouts will happen out of view of the public eye. Real romantic-like. I feel like I'm gonna be murdered. Isn't Ghosty in the game? Ghosty, are you talking about the spirit lady? Because, yes, she is in the game and we love her. <laughs> All makeouts will happen out of view. Oh, or wait, do you mean Ghostface? Is Ghostface in the game? I don't know if he would be in here. Yes, romance is the goal. So we'll all be waiting here in the complete silence trying to listen in and use our imaginations while you make out on the other side of the bar. But not watching. I don't... <laughs> Bruh. Oh, Ghostface? Yeah. I don't know if Ghostface is going to be in this because he's like an actual uh, property that they would have to license again. Maybe. It would be cool to see a lot more. I'm kind of happy that they brought Trickster in because that means maybe they'll show a couple of other killers. <laughs> I know, a lot of people freaking are simps for him. <laughs> um, gosh. Autocrat. <laughs> Dude, I feel like instead of making out on the other side of the bar, we're just gonna get murdered. Like adults. Romantic. Well-adjusted adults. Celeste, you're up! Oh no, you grip the bottle in your hand. <laughs> spirit, 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 spirit! And you put your fate in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Mini games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. And on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. Okay. This here upcoming minigame is a special minigame. Perfect for the less coordinated because there is no winning or losing. Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it, that's a bit like losing. But no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play? Or would you like me to repeat that? Repeat the instructions. Could you please repeat? My pleasure. Two parts. Pointer which rotates. And at the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. This here upcoming is special. Less coordinated. There's no winning or losing. Okay, ready to play? Ready. Ready! Anyway, here we go! Spin the bottle and see who you're gonna smooch. Spirit, 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 spirit! Oh, come on. Dang it! <laughs> okay, well, at least we got Huntress. You got Huntress! You two are meant to be. Dang, I want spirit! I should have saved before that one. I should probably save right here. We're gonna just be like... 
You got Huntress. You two are meant to be. Psych, you have to actually spin multiple times to get your real result. First to get to three times is your true match. This is how we play hardcore spin the bottle on this island here. <gasps> okay, okay, we got a timeless right. Oh, this is so hard. How am I supposed to... <laughs> how am I supposed to time this? <laughs> I don't want Trapper. <laughs> I want Spirit. Give me Spirit or Huntress, man. Oh. <gasps> Oh, we got her once. Okay, we just need to make it uh, the second time. Okay, come on, come on. Spirit, 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 spirit. Frick! Ah, God, no, please. I don't want to make out with him. No! Frick! <laughs> no, we're going to reload that. <laughs> I don't want Trapper. I wanted Spirit or Huntress. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Bruh, I did save. Okay, we'll make out with Trapper. And then we'll reload the save and see if we can get Huntress after. <laughs> Redo it. Ooh. Just this morning, you were waking up on a strange beach surrounded by strangers. Murderous intent. Yeah, you're looking across a beach towel at Trapper, lust in his eyes, sweat glistening on his skin. I'm scared. He's gonna kill me, guys. I'm scared. I don't like him. He doesn't make me feel safe. <laughs> your heart races. You can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. Trapper takes you by the hand and you sit face to face at a private section of the bar. I'm scared, guys. I'm scared. <laughs> He's gonna kill me. <laughs> He begins to reach for you, putting his hands on your shoulders. You're sweating, but not in the sexy way he is. You're sweating in the gross way you'd sweat at the interview for a job you're not even remotely qualified for. You don't know what to do. If you try and lock lips in this thing, you might gross him out so completely that he'll never be able to look at you romantically again. Trapper, I, you, we... Save it. It's not happening. Okay. Ooh, we're good. We're fine. We didn't make out with it. <laughs> don't cry. No. To get this close to a living god and then feel the sting of his rejection, it must hurt bad. But don't take it personally. Well, do, but use it to make yourself stronger. It's not because I don't want to. It's because you haven't earned it yet. You might later. For now, it can't be that easy. Sure, maybe with one of the others. They're weak, sad, lonely. Not me. I don't need this. It's mine to give or to withhold. You really dodged a bullet. This means you'll have a chance to present yourself in a bit more flattering of a light later. Assuming you survive. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I think you're cute. I would make out with you so hard your heart would cave in if I wanted to. And I do, but I still won't. Oh god, no. Please, Trapper. <laughs> Sir, no. Tell anyone I told you this and you die. They die, and then I have you all revive and kill you again. Oh no, please. If anyone asks, I was the best you ever had, which I might just be another time. I hate to break up such a passionate moment. That we only assume was passionate because we'd never spy on you constantly while you stay on this island. But dinner is being served. Right away and we must insist that you join us. We wouldn't want anyone dying of starvation. When there are so many more interesting things to die from. <laughs> oh my god. Bruh. I'm scared. <laughs> Seems like the next activity is mealtime. How quaint. You're expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around you. What were you expecting? Some kind of a grand hall of a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic you, like you'd find on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. And oh great, terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want us next to certain other people either. Oh no, am I gonna have to match them? I'm gonna cry. Wait, wait. <laughs> I need like a notebook. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a, a sketch pad out. This is life or death, guys. I don't want to be murdered. Bruh, I swear. Let me let me get get a pencil out. Okay, so we got spirit. I'm writing down their names. We got spirit. We have huntress. 
We've got a uh, trapper and we have wraith. I'm scared. You start, no one wants to sit next to trapper. Okay, so no one wants to sit next to. No one wants to sit next to trapper. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to wraith or trickster. And. Wraith is trapper. And trickster. Wait, what the? F oh, trickster is here. Trickster, what the frick? Why are you still here? He doesn't want to sit next to. Okay. Sir? Oh, yeah, trickster's here. Surprise. Yeah, well, they don't call him expected, sir. I'm sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers, and my whole shtick gets a little flustered. This dude is like. He got too many abs. I don't trust him. Hey there, you're looking good, Celeste. Real good. He's scared me, guys. I'm scared. Help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Saving would be a good idea. We're, we'll we'll save real quick. It's this one, right? Yeah, that one. Hey there, you're looking good, Celeste. Real good. <laughs> I'm scared. He's gonna kill me. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. So, Huntress uh, can't sit next to Trapper. Um, no, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. Look at this, we can't even fit everyone on the screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, do I unclaw it or directing traffic? You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite you. Oh. <laughs> Huntress and Trapper can't sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Oh, they can sit at the ends. Okay. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Okay, so I don't have to organize them. Thank God. <laughs> I was writing down little notes. Tonight's meal is prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. Hey, wait, is this a KFC crossover? <laughs> My favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. Okay, I guess Wraith doesn't like meat. Which you'd know considering what you've been up to. Who are you to get judgy now? I'm just I'm just sharing facts and you need to murder something to eat its meat, so that's like technically true. Technically true is the best kind of truth. Okay, enough yapping, let's eat. Hey Celeste, you think what I'm thinking? It's gonna be a person on that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps? I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know? When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. Oh no. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours, and we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Wow, he's right for a change, because... I am with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I hear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Ugh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough, grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obvs. The hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Oh no, she's getting spooky. Please stop. Please. I hate when we fight. Or talk. Or even when we look at each other in the eyes. Someone help Wraith, man. He's struggling out here. I can do it. I have a... I have the skull of a Zoro? Right, instead of slicing it up, you can club it to a second death. Hey, Celeste, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve up. Felix. I mean, dinner. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 straight hours. 
And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value and maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason they're always terrified of tetanus. <laughs> hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated when it got cold. <laughs> this is sad. Oh no. Here's a machete. Freshly sharpened. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm scared. Oh no, I wasn't doing good earlier. Bottom a target you're going to be pointing at. Sometimes the target is immediately visible. Sometimes it's hidden until the pointer arrives. Press the space bar to stop the pointer while over the target to win. Fail to land on the target and you will lose. To achieve a perfect success, land on the start of the target area, not the end. Oh, okay, so I have enough leeway. So that's the target area, but I could overshoot it if I want. You ready to play? Ready. <laughs> I'm scared. Anyway, we go. Slice. <gasps> yes! Perfect. Okay. Gosh. I panicked so hard right there. Oh my goodness. Oh no, there's another one. <laughs> that was... Oh. Oh lord. It's getting faster. No! I missed completely. Oh lord. This is not good. Oh no, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Oh, no, 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 I'm gonna die. Oh, oh no, dude. Ah! No. I hope you're drunk. Dinner is finally served. For real. That sounds special. Especially come from mass killers while they eat, which involves lifting their mass. <laughs> Wait, no. We're gonna reload that. <laughs> what are we at? We're at... Can we reload this one? Okay, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna try this again. Okay, enough yapping. Okay, I can just hold it. Okay. We're gonna attempt this. Okay, let me save ahead right now we're gonna save right there our bottom one or would you like me to feed ready okay <laughs> we're gonna try this again okay right there not bad oh, gosh okay not bad oh Gosh dang it. Okay. This is hard. I'm not good at these spinny ones. Oh my gosh. Nope. Okay. We're gonna... We need to try this. Let's try this again. Load. Okay. Okay, we're getting serious. Oh gosh, not bad. Okay, not perfect. This is scary. Oh gosh, how do you how do you get perfect on this? Oh frick, I missed. <laughs> Dang it, this is hard. Oh my gosh. Ooh. That was pretty.
pretty good. I'd like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. We did it! <laughs> okay. Woo! Oh my gosh, we missed a couple of times, but at least Spirit appreciates us. And we got little Hawaiian flowers in the background, and she's been all cute. Dinner is finally served. For real. The sounds, especially coming from the masked killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell, I mean... Come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Gosh, what the heck? Why is the... Why is the ocean being so scary? Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Celeste. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Oh! Oh! I get it. They don't have to poop. <laughs> Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. Oh gosh, I didn't even think about that. Oh hey, that'd be cool, Alpha. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Can you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. Oh no. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? This is gross. I'm sorry. Look at the seagull! <laughs> save real quick. Oh no, it won't let me save. Oh no. Look at the seagull! I'm sorry. Do I apologize? Actually, it's not quite the food or the company. I'm just super self-conscious how I look when I eat. I was just pretending to be grossed out by the inner so I'd have an excuse not to chew in front of everyone. Sorry if that made me awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross, but try to relax and not worry what everyone thinks. It's so important to always remember people are watching you, judging you, definitely not ignoring you. Right? Guys? Anyone listening to me? Typically, a group that includes one, if not more, cannibals staring at you with meat juice dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now you're barely able to keep your head up, let alone get scared and run away. I'm a narrator, not a physician, so please don't take this as medical advice, but I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh god, the ocean! <laughs> oh hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide, narrator to narrator. The ocean. Not sure how I feel about the characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Let me actually save real quick, just to be safe. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were. Am I right? <laughs> For this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Fake, mysterious, I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. <laughs> oh my goodness. You wake up to find spirit holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. What? Don't you just love the ocean at night? I do. Why is she pouring water in my mouth? What is happening? Excuse me, we were eating food. <laughs> Staring out over the vast darkness of the ocean really validates the feelings inside me that were all truly insignificant and the only thing worth pursuing is revenge. I have to wonder, how could anyone believe anything else? Look out into the darkness of night and ponder her question. Well, it's a simple question. How could they? 
How could anyone not feel small and alone in the face of such massive nothingness? You found someone special. You've always been alone. I don't know what to do, guys. Oh no, well I saved before. I feel like you've always been alone will be really mean. I used to feel that way, small, unimportant, alone, but lately I'm not so sure. I've started to feel different. I've started to actually think that maybe this island is where I might meet someone special. You look at Spirit, who has turned from the ocean to look at you while you speak on this topic. She's cl clearly so passionate about. A friend, perhaps, something more. I don't know what this island has planned for me. Ha! Huh, a friend? Friends are just cowards who seek comfort in numbers. I had friends once, back before I was chopped into a bunch of pieces by my father. Friends aren't what's keeping me held together. I'm floating in a cloud of rage. Jeez. Oh god, I was so dumb. So busy trying to please everyone and be the perfect student, perfect employee, the perfect daughter. I didn't take care of myself and now I'm all I've got. First of all, I got distracted from my true purpose. My destiny, the purpose that was sitting inside me my whole life. Okay, so this might sound a bit silly, but Spirit looks around to see if there's anyone else on the beach. When she's convinced that it's only you two, she continues. Oh gosh, is she gonna murder me? Okay, if she murders me, we'll redo. <laughs> There's a dragon that lives inside me. I've always known, but I've tried to ignore it. When I couldn't ignore it, I tried to put it down. I'm so stupid. You're not stupid. That sounds badass. Right? But I didn't let it out. And then I, you know, chop chop. And now that dragon is pretty much a one-track revenge beast. But enough about me. What's inside of you, stranger? She's gonna chop me. No dragon, just a lot of fire. Just fire, raging for her, in fact, begging to burn this whole place down if I let it out. Maybe I am the dragon. I'm sorry, but you're no dragon, and breathing fire, that's some hobbit-type nonsense. I'm a descendant of proud samurai. Our dragons are on a whole other level. Looks like there was only room for one dragon inside spirit, after all. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm gonna reload that. I was hoping she'd murder me, but she didn't. <laughs> I wonder I'm curious what would she say if we said you've always been alone maybe it's spirit's words maybe it's the ocean or maybe it has always been this way but you suddenly feel connected to spirit's words I may not remember much about my life before but there's one thing I know to be true I've always been alone and I always will be alone Spirit has turned from looking at the ocean is looking directly at you now. It's a funny idea, isn't it? Being alone. Together? It's the best we can hope for. Maybe. Or maybe it's too much to hope for. Maybe it's impossible. <gasps> she cried! No! To pretend we know anything, is that just arrogance? Oh god, I was so dumb. So busy trying to please everyone and be the perfect student. The perfect employee, the perfect daughter. I didn't take care of myself and now I'm all I've got. First of all, I got distracted from my true purpose. My destiny. The purpose that was sitting inside me my whole life. Okay, so this might sound silly, but... Okay, so she's talking about the dragon. Inside of you, stranger. Nothing but darkness. I'd kill to have a dragon. Maybe not the best choice of words. I mean, a dragon sounds awesome. Honestly, though, I don't feel like I've got anything inside me. At all. Just darkness. Never-ending darkness. And here I thought Spirit was the biggest golf on the island until you arrived. <laughs> Perhaps I could light a torch and search through that darkness. Bruh! Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not part of this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was... No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after we come... Oh, after what comes after the flirting. Oh, teeth bite? Okay, I will do two teeth bite real quick. Okay, are you ready? T 
Teen fight! I hope you enjoyed teeth fight. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some water too because I'm a little bit thirsty. <laughs> there we go. Ouch, my wrist. That's weird. Oh, shoot. Okay. One quick thing. I gotta charge something real quick. Hydrate? Okay, I will hydrate again. Oh, gosh. So many hydrates. Let me fix something real quick. Because I have to plug this in. Before it dies. Oh, no. I accidentally clicked on... Okay, there we are. I will drink some water right now. How many hydrates do I have? Two? Okay. There we go. Okay, let's continue on. Go, go, go! Oh gosh, where are they going? Is something gonna happen? Once everyone is gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you, hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on time for evening activities. We'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time's my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. Are you telling us that only one person gets to share? Who will we decide who? Or oh, how will we decide who? Let me save real quick. Loads. Oh great, we have to decide as a group that never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head off. head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. Sorry, everyone. I think you're talking about me. To be honest, I still understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald, if you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and Muss are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill, it's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us! Oh my gosh. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. Well, we still gotta get started on story time, so... Celeste, who do you think should go? Oh, damn it, that's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Uh, Huntress. I choose you, spirit! Oh, not Huntress, spirit. Whoa, 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 this entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the... catchphrases. <laughs> oh. Really? You want to hear from me? Spirit huffs dramatically, rolls her eyes as she gets to her feet in front of the campfire. Don't let her talk you out of it. She's great with ghost stories. I don't know where she gets it, but she comes up with the scariest stuff. Seriously disturbing, even to me. And I literally pulled the guy's skull and spine out once with my bare hands. Oh my gosh! Talk about bullshit stories. If everyone else is going to chit-chat, I guess I can just sit down and... Huntress's eyes go red behind her mask, and both Trapper and Rafe take their seat. They know when it's worth fighting and when it's not. Ahem, well I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary. It's a romance. Too late now, though I was selected, so I'm going to tell my story. I call it... The Prisoner's Kiss. Ooh, what is it about? You notice that Huntress and Wraith are both sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Nobody offered you popcorn! It was a dark summer night. 
Warm rain seeped from the sky like blood from an old wound. <laughs> Detective Hoda, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called to the scene of a strange occurrence unlike anything she had ever seen before. When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen other officers were doing everything they could to keep curious onlookers away. But how could anyone resist wanting to know more? For there, in the middle of a busy market, had appeared a giant box. Strange, alien in its appearance, and massive in size. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered? Built on site? In such a busy area, how could something like this just appear? A mystery. It was as if conjured by magic. But this was no illusion. The huge box was very real, and someone was trapped inside. Spirit pauses her story to look from face to face of each audience member. She has no expression, but you feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. Dude, she's spooky AF! Help me! cried someone inside the box. It was a man. Terrified. Trapped. Imprisoned. His voice trembling. By now it was it. Every detective in the city was there, looking the strange structure up and down. Inspecting it on every side. It didn't make sense. There were no doors, no windows, no fasteners or seams. It was completely solid and much too heavy to move by hand. Solid, that is, except for a single small slit, just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of the prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up and here I was. I'm so scared. Please help me, cried the man, as if pleading for his life. No stranger to tense situations, Detective Hada comforted the man. She used her training to call him, uh, to calm him and buy time for the other investigators. However, time did not bring clarity, only anxiety, as the night dragged on with no progress opening the box. And as the night grew longer, the seeping rain puddling on the ground, the man inside grew more desperate, more sad and lonely, more pathetic and in need of help. <laughs> but Detective Hoda was no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her. Like it never had before. Don't let me die in here, the man begged. Don't let me die alone. Stay calm, instructed Detective Hoda. You're not alone. I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together and we won't let this be the end of your story. Looking through that narrow... Narrowest of passageways, Detective Hoda watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of the strange, sad prisoner. Together, they both wept in silence at the hopelessness of the moment. Oh man, she's crying! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Barovian accent! <laughs> How dare! Now I have to read in Barovian accent. Let us see. Promise, asked the man. Promise that I'm not alone? Yes, she promised. I do. A simple pledge, she felt an instant connection like she had never felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any other hostages she had worked so hard to free before. <gasps> oh no, is this... I think I might know the ending of this story. And so when the man's eyes closed and backed away, it didn't scare Detective Hotafor. She knew he would return and he did. Resting his lips up to the narrow slit in this horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, steam flowing from his mouth as he asked, Promise, promise that I'm not alone. Yes, she promised, I do. And pressing her palms against the cold outside of the box, without truly knowing why, Detective Hota leaned forward and placed her own lips to the opening. Letting her breath creep into the strange structure, allowing her warm lips to fall on this man's. It was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. She could feel on this brief contact the beating of her heart, pulsing blood through every inch of her body, matched beat for beat in a soft touch. Thank you, said the man. No trace of fear remaining in his voice, he backed away into the darkness, disappearing in a single moment of eerie calmness. Get back, yelled an officer, suddenly thrusting himself between Detective Pota and the box, breaking a silence that would soon be filled by a cacophony of whirring gators and clicking latches, a symphony of mechanical activity happening all at once. 
Something had triggered as if an unseen lever pulled and the side of the giant box began to slide open. Detective Hona gripped her flashlight tightly and pushed forward into the foggy interior of the giant box. Her feet splashed in the puddled rainwater for her duration as she swept her light from side to side. And that's when her eyes landed on the man. Or at least landed on what should have been him. There in the corner of the box was a pile of pieces. Like parts of a doll almost pulled apart or... Perhaps that's just how Detective Hota had to think of him in that moment to survive. A collection of segments, limbs, pieces disconnected from one another, cleanly severed and placed in a neatly little pile. In the top of that pile, a head, cold pale eyes open, lips in icy blue. Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression lifeless, her lips blue, tears fall from her chin and soak into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story, and it's safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking into the fire or up the sky, anywhere but that spirit. It was you who chose her, you who initiated this harrowing tale. So sad, so creepy, so sensual. <laughs> she really went into great detail when it came to describing that kiss. Too much detail, and no one is sure to act. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we we done bad. I think we did good. Okay, Borovian accent ended. <laughs> oh, I accidentally punted my mic. I apologize. This game was supposed to be a lighthearted romp. Please, I said do something. Uh, say something. Say nothing, hugger. Cool story. I said I'm gonna try to start one of those slow claps. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Uh, can I give her a hug? She's gonna murder me. We're gonna attempt. You stand while singing and approach, reaching your arms around for, for a hug. Her robe hovering in the air begins to wrap itself around you and you squeeze into her. It's kind of like being hugged back, but also like being tied up. It's certainly not what you expected. Instinctually, you pull yourself away, but it's an awkward moment and you nearly fall over into the fire. Spirit says nothing and floats away without so much as a goodbye. You meanwhile realize everyone had just watched this truly strange interaction from the corner of their eyes. Oh, oh gosh. Stretch, 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 stretch. Oh no. Was that a bad idea? We're gonna save right here. Yeah, just let me save. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. One step closer. <laughs> Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Dang it, Trickster! We're trying to enjoy the beach. Oh, God. Help me. <laughs> Need that drink after all that reading? Oh yes, I will hydrate. It's been a lot of reading tonight. <laughs> he says, hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? Bonk. <laughs> Bonk, go to horny jail. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how I feel. This man just pops out of nowhere. Where's just that punk trickster. <laughs> You see, he's, I think his character design is really neat, and he's pretty freaking nice to look at, but at the same time, he just seems crazy. Well, I mean, everyone seems crazy, but he just seems really crazy. Like, I don't know, I, I don't, I already don't trust everyone. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, my thing crashed. Let me boot it up again real quick. Um, but yeah, I don't really trust him. Like, I mean, I don't trust anyone else, but, like, Spirit, I'm like, that's my girl. I feel sad for her, for what she's been through. She waifu. Oh, we'll do that one. Uh... <laughs> 
nice to look at. Everyone here is nice to look at, okay? Oops, my thing popped up. Let me make it disappear for a second. Oop. There we go. <laughs> I really like spirit, though. We're going for spirit this round. We'll have trickster later, okay? I'm also kind of curious because he's a, uh, like a secret. He's a secret ending? <laughs> you don't know what to say. He doesn't wait for an answer. Dang it, we have no choice. Oh God, he's approaching us. Help, 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 help. What do we do? <laughs> help. <laughs> I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. I don't... I don't know how I feel about him. I don't... I don't... Help. <laughs> He's got too many abs. He's threatening me. I'm scared. Help. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Oh, God. No, please. Help. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Spirit approaches you. Oh, <gasps> Spirit's coming back. You know, I was watching you while I told my story. Hey, listen to music. I could tell it was having an effect on you. This fog that follows me around. I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. Oh, <laughs> Lord. You and I are both absolutely flabbergasted at that piece of information. Legit, you learn something new every day, even when you're a god. I mean, a narrator. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know what to do. Posture check? Okay, posture check. Yes, we have to make ourselves presentable. I'm standing up straight. I have the best posture, Miss Spirit Lady. Um... 10 out of 10. I had to hydrate because I'm getting too thirsty. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't right now. I love her. Okay, we're continuing. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm just looking at her character design, man. She's beautiful. You're doing it again right now. You need to calm down. You should come to the hot tub with me. <gasps> <gasps> Bruh! <laughs> Bruh, I can't. Oh, gosh. Look at her cute face. I'm- I'm dying. I'm- <clears throat> Bruh! We're going to the hot tub. Please don't cook us, though. God, please. I would hate for that to happen. Dipping in hot tubs with the spirit. You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't fall over. An offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. Um... Can I say real quick? <laughs> you and your storyteller friend slip into the water. <laughs> Please don't murder me. That's all I ask. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. I just want to be totally clear. Even though that story bore some similarities to my life, it was not about me in any way, shape, or form. Not symbolically. Not metaphorically. Not any other equally. I believe you. Completely. Sure, you were cut into pieces in your life, and so was the person in the story. Perfectly normal coincidence. <laughs> Praise be the god. <laughs> Sure, you're on this island trapped, one might say, in a most puzzling place. Also a completely regular coincidence. And sure, his lips are blue, your lips are blue. Really, you'd call this blue? Searching for answers, hoping to find... Revenge! Okay, so the similar similarities stop there, I guess. Coincidences. Sorry, the coincidences. Get this through your head, whoever you are. Samurai blood runs through my veins. Or, well, maybe it has coagulated by now. No need to sweat the dear details. Regardless, I'm a descendant of noble warriors. Thousands of years of training with bladed weapons preceded my entrance into this world.
I swear, if Spirit shows up in a bikini, I'm gonna die. <laughs> She's already wearing a bikini. <laughs> we just need her to take the little cover off to show more. You know how many swords that is? A lot. You gotta figure that with that many sharp edges. A person is bound to get disconnected from a body part here and there. The truth is, I wouldn't typically share this, so don't go blabbing about it. I dreamt that story, like watching a movie in my sleep. When I was just a little girl, years before my father's funky blade into my skin. I've never been able to shake it. That's a very adult story for a child's dream. <laughs> do you believe me? Yes. I know we just met, but yes, I do believe you. The way you told that story, it clearly came from someplace deep. Fool! Who taught you to trust a stranger? You're going to get hurt if you don't learn to take better care of yourself. Now you got me wondering, do I believe you if you believe her or not? If I know everything, because trust me, I do know everything. Don't I already know the answer to my own question about if I believe your answer to Spear's question? Whoa. Oceaneer got me tripping. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to distract us both. What's important is that a certain corpsey cutty a uh, corpsey cutie floating in a cloud of magical mist might still be waiting for you to say the right thing and free her from her puzzle box. If you believe that she is the... Damn it, got me going again. Unfortunately, before you can follow this conundrum to what will surely be a mind-numbing cycle of new questions... Oh no. You find a certain two someone standing before you with a fresh towel ready to dry you off. Dang it. Sorry, kids. But it's time for bed. I might be the youngest one here, but I'm no kid. I do, I do, however, love being wrapped up in a fresh, clean towel. My mother used to help me wash my hair when I was young. She'd comb out all the tangles and tie a ribbon around it before sending me on my way. I miss her. You watch a spirit stares off into the distance, her hand gripping into a tight fist. She doesn't notice you're watching her at first. When she catches you looking, she turns away, roughly grabs a towel from Dwight, and then pushes him and Claudette aside as she floats off. Dang it! <laughs> Ew, bedtime. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting almost till night. Looking into the cracking embers, you think about Spirit's story, about the prisoner in the puzzle box. If you manage to escape this place, will you leave it for your life, or has it already been taken from you? And it's just a matter of time until you make a gruesome discovery. Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Lana and Dwight arrive. They're now familiar, creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. Jesus Christ, why is there blood everywhere? We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable. Or die trying! They hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease. Yeah, any music but the freaking creepy background song that was just playing. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Can I save before this? Ready. And away we go. As you relax and look to the fire, the radio begins to buzz and flicker. You examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial and fix it. Is that good or bad? Let's see what's on this station. Listen more or turn it off. I still can't play. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Hey, Bruh, bruh, y'all know. Spirit, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Oh no, is she gonna murder me? Please, help. Spirit tells you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. I like to listen to flute music, dab on some essential oils, and steam my pores. Really? What, even the dead like to relax? I don't really have any of those things around. Oh, <gasps> she gave us a brush! Spirit reaches out and presents you with a unique item. It's a small comb carved from bamboo. Oh, we're special! Dude, she gave us a comb. 
I guess you can hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I will want it back, though, and if you lose it, well, you'll get your revenge on me. If it's the last thing I do. Oh, no. I finally start to feel sleepy, except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky by now. You've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably odd. The human body is made up of 60% water. Did you know that? Of course you did. Everyone knows that, even amnesiac video game protagonists. Well, guess what? Drink as much as you'd like, you'll never get to 100. You hear me? Don't think I don't see what you're up to. What? Sir? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, did he just threaten me? What? He, 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 he was like, you're drinking too much water. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Huntress is rifling through your pockets. You, ha, huh, hey, stay away. Oh, you're awake. I wasn't stealing from you, merely trying to get to know you better by seeing what sort of trinkets you keep close. I saw you with the spirit right before bedtime. Look, I'm not saying I don't trust them, but... Well, yes, I am saying that. I don't trust anyone I don't already have tied up. So I was making sure they didn't do anything fishy. And I was making sure you're not a soldier. Soldiers killed my father, you know. Well, I've got you. You should really consider spending more time with me. I'm not scary. You're not? Not at all. I'm just a lost girl on a big island. I've been watching you since you got here, you know. Not in a creepy way. Huntress pauses for a long moment. Oh, God. She's getting jealous. Oh, no. <laughs> what do we do? All right. In a charmingly creepy way, I've noticed how fun loving you seem. If you spend some time with me tomorrow, maybe I'll take you to this special place I found. It's all mine. None of the other killers have been able to find me there. It's quiet and isolated. Maybe I'll even show you how to make beef strong enough. Um, I don't trust. That all sounds very enticing. I'll let you get back to bed. It's been a long day. John just places a gigantic hand on your forehead and your eyes flutter closed. Finally alone for real this time. Maybe you drift off to sleep. Again, hopefully you're not poisoned. Oh, trap. She probably took our comb. Bruh. If she stole my comb, we're gonna have to go and find her. Wait a second, where are we? This isn't... Oh, jeez. It... It is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all of the contestants talk directly to the camera. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat an all-organic diet of raw deer, bear, and human. And I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. There's always time to turn things around. Like that one time I spent day and night searching for food in vain. Only to return to my cabin, spent and starving to find a family of squirrels nesting in my chimney. They were delicious. This is weird. I don't care enough to kill this person. But if anyone else wants to, I don't care enough to stop them. Might have to just kill Dwight to feel anything again. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself or really um, invest in something that might hurt me. So I don't know. Maybe we'll just see how it goes. Or maybe they'll realize I'm not the one for them. They seem pretty smart, so that's probably what'll happen. Dude, Wraith has no freaking self-confidence. Someone help him. I'm not attracted to Wraith 100%. He does spook me. But somebody help him. I gotta learn to go easier on myself. Who can love me if I can't love myself? Exactly, Wraith. He looks like Groot. Yeah, he does. I know that everyone thinks of me as beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hand robe? Okay, those are a choice, sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm gonna get bloody revenge on a society that has used me and thrown me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. Hey, Might be good to have her. <laughs> Oh gosh, why am I moving in slow motion? Oh, is something glitching out? Oh no! Something's malfunctioning! <laughs> I'm... What, what is... Cursed? 
something something's happening. Why am I going in slow motion? Did I click on something? I might have hit something. Let me actually double check. <laughs> this is scary, guys. Oh no. Oh right, wait, I'm back to normal? That was weird. Why for that split second was I glitching out? <laughs> oh my goodness, that was weird. Okay, let's save this. Have I been doing that the entire time? <laughs> you open your eyes and the sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky. And you feel great. Totally well rested. You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by the campfire but woke up several yards down the beach. Wait, are you on vacation? Was yesterday nothing more than a strange dream? No, not a dream. You really are here for another day. Why, well, I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. Spirit's trying to be with us. Oh my gosh, speaking of weirdos, I see the rest of the gang is hanging out on the beach. This is definitely not a dream. I wouldn't rule out a nightmare just yet, though. At least they make for a sexy bunch, no? <laughs> oh god. And talk about sexy, here comes Trickster carrying coffee. Oh no. He's gonna freaking Trickster, please. Morning, beautiful. I thought you might like a nice cup of joe to start this incredible day off, right? This man needs to stop. I'm looking away respectfully. <laughs> I don't trust this coffee. Trickster seems suspiciously cheerful. I'm sure there's nothing nefarious behind this joyful demeanor, though. I feel like we're gonna have to do stuff so that certain people don't murder us. Because they get jealous. Everyone knows musicians are morning people. I also want to wish you luck. Today is an important one. My only regret is that I won't be a bigger part of it. I don't like his the way he looks, man. I feel threatened. Oh no, I'm running out of saves. I guess we'll save one right here. <laughs> Budgeting issues. I don't... I don't know how I feel about him. Also, I am just swamped with engagements, especially on the other islands. Trickster winks at you. Stop! <laughs> if you want to ask him how to reach the other island, now is the time. Never mind, he left. Well, at least he brought me a cup of... No, wait, don't drink that! What the hell was that? They don't call him the Trickster because he's good on a skateboard. And he definitely didn't get my name because he brings people drinks so they can have a good morning. That was almost certainly not coffee, and I don't want anyone casually poisoning, imprisoning, and torturing you. Yeah. Jesus Christ! He was gonna poison me, imprison me, and torture me after? Oh my god. This is supposed to be a tropical paradise. The type of place you give a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 2 thumbs up to review. So, not an eternal prison of pain. And please make sure to leave a review, it really helps with the algorithms. Just trust me, I'm looking out for you, so can we please move on? Oh god, not the ocean again. Hey, wait a second. How did a possibly omniscient, possibly unreliable narrator physically just knock that coffee out of your hand? This is not Parliament, and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak out of turn at this moment. I need no recognition, for I am the ocean. I dominate the land. I submerge those who defy me and become their watery grave. Actually, speaking of graves, I would like to say something. Something of... Grave importance. Fine, go ahead. Even if this place is an eternal prison of pain, and I'm not saying it is, even a place of extreme horror can still receive a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, thumbs up review. If it was crafted with love and or that's the type of thing you're into. You know, the ocean's right. A lot of hard work goes into a place like this. You should really judge it on the artist's intent, and whenever possible, start from the mindset of giving them the benefit of the doubt. Constructing these elaborate simulations, uh, I mean vacations, is not easy to do. Yeah, oh, she needs to chill. <laughs> Sometimes our small bugs are inconsistencies, but that's just the nature of the process. Perfection is overrated, the universe is filled with mysteries. We ought to celebrate those who venture to bear their souls as part of a creative process with the ultimate intent of making things for our enjoyment, not be overly critical of them. Are you two trying to tell me on this place actually being good? 
You don't have to say it like that, especially after I saved you from that poorly made cup of coffee. Sorry, we should have been here five minutes ago. They always do this on the second morning. Sad, really. Even if they do make some great points. Oh, sure, they make great points. I agree. Can we please move on? <laughs> oh, posture check. I have good posture. <laughs> the last few minutes aside, have you been enjoying your time here on the island? Yes, I've been having a lovely time. Yeah, it's been really entertaining. Yeah, I'm not suspicious. There's, <laughs> There's no no option. If I were to summarize my time here, I'd call it a lovely time. Oh, lovely. We love to hear that. Because isn't that what this place is all about? Finding love? No. Shut up, Dwight. You'll get us all killed again and again and again. We do need to ask you one more question, though. We all had to sign away our rights to say anything negative about this place. Would you please sign this non-disparagement agreement? Yes? Yes, I would hereby agree to participate in a verbal contract saying that I, Celeste, will never say anything negative about my stay here on this island. Perfect! Delightful. Excellent. Um. More ocean? Yes? Yes. Hey, Celeste, it's so totally cool if you have constructive feedback. The place to leave that is in a positive review. We all know that nobody reads negative reviews of games or resorts like this. Anyway, I see Dwight and Claudette have gone into a trance, and with the grumbling I hear from your belly, that can only mean one thing. Breakfast. Why is the ocean just freaking coming in all the time? Perfect timing. Everyone rolls into the dining area to lard up those <laughs> little bellies with pancakes and bacon. And so much for maintaining these beach balls. We're all half naked in a tropical paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? A yogurt? Magic powers will only get you so far. Even killers watch their sodium intake. Take your plane and sit down thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again, except all in one day on a beautiful and mysterious island. Looks like you're not the only one doing some in introspection, though. Chopper stands up to talk about how his day went, in case anyone was wondering. Personally, I wasn't. Can't imagine you can make me any angrier today than you did yesterday, but I really hope you do. I really, really hope you do. Unrelated, anyone seen where I left my cleaver? Is he talking to me? Did I make him upset? Oh no. Is he talking to me? Is he gonna murder me? I'm scared. Ah, oh, just kidding. I always know where my cleaver is. Well, that was bizarre. Back to your bre- Nope. Now Huntress steps up to talk about her feelings. This island is treacherous. I don't know what the newcomer thinks they're doing here, but it certainly isn't helping any of us. Oh no. Oh no, they're gonna murder me. Whoa, Huntress pretends to be all independent, but is she secretly kind of miffed you and her aren't getting along? Oh, well, that surely must be it. No one else would really stand up during breakfast, too. And just like that, here comes Spirit. Did everyone sleep well? I did, or should I say I did not? I haven't slept in 20 years on account of the whole burning quest for a familial revenge thing. And last night was no different, so in that case, it was exactly how it should be. Got a lot of reading done, though. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going back to finally resenting being trapped here with all of you. Well, we can keep doing so. Okay, well, at least she didn't seem angry. I'm guessing Wraith has had enough time to work up the courage to speak in front of everyone. Ah, uh, perfect. There he is. Take us home, Wraith. Oh, hey, that was fun yesterday, huh? Yeah, I mean, not, like, too much fun. That'd be weird, but, like, uh, a good, like, like, a good amount of fun. And now they're all looking at you expectantly. Wait, are you supposed to stand up and explain how yesterday made you feel? Uh, I think I need to process everything by myself. I'll see you all soon. Damn, what a power play. Keep them wanting more. You're getting good at this game. Or a uh, sexy two-to-life experience. Shame you didn't get to eat breakfast, but so be it. Oh god, they're all mad at me because I didn't hang out with them. <laughs> Guys, what do I do? <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get murdered. Okay, for sure I'm not gonna hang out with Huntress because I have a feeling she's gonna kill me if she takes me to that secret place that nobody knows where it is. Maybe I'll hang out with Trapper just so he doesn't kill me. Because I need to make it to the end of this game. 
And uh, I have a feeling that if I don't hang out with... If I just hang out with Spirit the entire time, one of the other characters is going to lose it and snap my neck. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm getting spooked. Before you get there, though, something catches your attention. You hear that? Who are you addressing me? Well, yeah, I guess. That is okay, right? You know, I might be pursuing a relationship with one of these four fine killers, but it feels like the person I'm getting to know the most is you, narrator. It's only okay in so much as it serves to illustrate that you've lost your mind, seeing how I'm not real and all. I heard it this time. I think it's coming from behind the pool shed. No, no, stick it in there. A little more, a little more. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yes. Oh, God. How does that feel? Intense. Nice. Yeah, that feels right. This, this is this is uncomfortable. I want you to take that and put it right. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that. Exactly like that. I swear I had no idea these two even do uh, whatever it is they're doing. I'm afraid to look. Please say something so they know you're close by and can hear everything. Uh, oh, wow. Look at this super cool bottle of Trickster brand suntan lotion someone left on a chair. Anyone know where I can buy some? Damn it. Oh, come on. A little privacy, please. Do I just panting and Claudette has a crazed look in her eyes? Sorry, I didn't know it. How to let you know I was here and that I could hear you. Well, you know. Know what? What do you think we were doing? You were doing... I don't know exactly what you are doing, but it sounded like a... Uh, fun? You think two people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oh, God! <laughs> Oops. We get five minutes to ourselves every day and we spend it hoping if we stab each other in the just the right spot, we won't get resurrected. Oh my god. <laughs> That's horrible. I can't believe that the key is finding the exact place we need to bleed out from. And I believe that place is in our appendix. Why else would it be there? Makes sense to me. Did you actually think we were me and him? Dwight? <laughs> Meme reveal? Oh gosh. You don't have to laugh that hard to get it. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so mean. Okay, let me pop up a meme real quick. Oh gosh, she just keeps laughing. Mm. What is a good one? <laughs> this meme is so freaking... Okay, meme reveal. Let me bring it up real quick. Um... Image... Dude, this music is sick! He's shredding it on the guitar. Whoa, dude. <laughs> Bruh, this guy. This is today's meme. I hope you can see it. It says, forgive me for what I must yabba dabba do. <laughs> I don't know why I like it so much, but I do, okay? I think it's cool. I think it's funny. It's also really cursed because it's like so grainy and pixelated. <laughs> okay. Let's continue on. My life is a nightmare and yet somehow it's never been worse than right now. <laughs> or Dwight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's go, lover boy. I noted all our entry wounds and our five minutes is up. Anyway. Good luck, Celeste. You're going to need it. And hey, if you figure out how to escape this island, please make sure your ghost tells us how. You mean my ghost? I guess I'm just gonna have to like resave on this. And oh yeah, okay, we read that one already. That was both a tragedy and a comedy. A cragmedy. Silent. Shut up. I like it. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah. You're heading to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. So today has been exhausting too. But you're dedicated to achieving a true centered sense of calm. No drama, no bullshit, just soaking up the sun in a heated pool. 
Today you're on a date with you. Ooh. I like that. I want to be on a date with me. Who would make the first move? And aside from that disturbing thought, all is going to plan until a shadow we oh a shadow blocks your precious sun. Spiky tip like a palm tree is bending over to screw with you. But it's no tree at all, it's God damn it, trickster! What are you doing here? Hey babe. Oh god, someone help me! I'm gonna scream right now. Breakfast was weird, huh? Everyone just getting up and announcing how they're feeling? What's that about? Some force kind of checked in with the group. I don't like it. Fishy. Kind of lazy. Whatever, though. Breakfast is dumb. No one should eat before noon or after 4 p.m. Yeah, I do intermittent fasting. You see my abs, by the way? Yes, I've seen them, sir, and I'm trying to look away respectfully. <laughs> Maybe you can see them later. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I was reading the line. Maybe you can see them later at my private stage on the other island. You know, IP Island, where all the Hollywood celebs hang out. If you play your cards right. I'm gonna scream right now. I can't. I could give you a private show. Why is he angry when he says that? He's gonna kill me. Guys, I'm scared. Catch you around. Okay, Ooh, calm down. We're okay. His abs are pretty amazing, you gotta give him that. And the blow-up bat? Threatening but adorable. Makes for an interesting silhouette. Genius design. <laughs> Bruh, who allowed this man to exist? Who allowed him to come into this? I was not expecting him. I was like, oh no, it'll only be the four. And then they just brought Trickster in to like, stir everything up. He needs to stop. psychopath just like the rest of them you don't gotta give him anything and we're not best friends just because we had a little talk about doing a little talking it's not an open invitation to go smashing the fourth wall every five seconds okay now that that guy is gone and we've got some ground rules established that we're definitely going to abide by it's time to lay back take some deep slow breaths and nope another shadow these people will not leave you alone let's see who it is this time <gasps> It's spirit that checks out. You two have gotten pretty cozy. Eh? My girl! My waifu! We should get out of here. I know a place that brings a bit of welcome darkness to this tropical nightmare. Best of all, I'm the only one that seems to know about it. So we won't be bothered there. Oh god, let me save. I don't, just in case I, uh... Just in case I get murdered. Um, where do I save? I guess... We'll save right here. I just don't want to get murdered, okay? So I'm like trying to decide. I don't even know why I'm telling you really. It's my private spot, but I guess I've got a feeling that you'll appreciate it the way that I do. Not like these other killers. They don't get me. But I'll get them. Oh, I'll get them all and I'll get my father too. And I'll punish him for what he did to my mother and me. Spirit radiates a menacing aura, waving her sword around the air as she threatens, well, the entire universe. It's scary and more than a little hot if you get turned on by menacing. Look, all this time on Murderer's Island has got us both a little confused about things. I'm choosing to lean into it. I'd suggest you do the same. You've seen her get mad, which is probably enough to scare you into compliance, but you've also seen that there's a more sensitive side hiding within her. Which one do you think will win out? You consider her offer, but... Before you can decide if you want to go off with spirit, the wraith interjects. Get out of here! I was trying to... Dude, me and my wife were going to hang out on the beach and be cool. Gosh. Gosh damn, wraith. Now is the time you decide to speak. Really? <laughs> I'm going to scream right now. Honestly, Spirit's great. She's the only one around here that doesn't totally get on my nerves. I guess you've got good taste, but I don't know. We can hang out and I can show you some cool stuff if you want. Or, uh, look at I said anything. Get out of here, right? Bro, I'm picking my white blue. I'm sorry. Tough choice. You weigh your options quickly because you can only go on one date today and you also don't want to be hacked to pieces for saying the wrong thing. It's always good to remember that these are all cold-blooded killers, but you know what they say when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And then die a horrible, wretched, writhing death after drinking it because the lemons were poisoned all along. Sorry, the sign has really got me tilted. 
So who will it be? My waifu? I don't see Wraith murdering me if I say no to him. I see Spirit cutting my head off if I say no to her. So we're gonna pick her. Ah, uh, gotta go with Spirit. You made the correct decision, but know this. Just because you picked me doesn't mean I'm going to slobber all over you like a dog. Understand? Uh, I understand, miss. Well, of course I... You've still got a lot to prove to me. I want to believe that our connection is real, but I've been hurt before. Literally. With a katana. A katana that I now wield in spectral form. You feel me? Because you will feel me if you try any of that macho trapper crap. No, man. I ain't like him. I'm different. Yeah, I feel you. Before you ask Claudette and Dwight to clarify, I'll just let you know that yes, it is too late to change your answers now. Okay. Hopefully we won't get murdered. You and Spirit arrive at the coast, overlooking the Black Lighthouse. It's old and decrepit, but still impressive. There's something magnetic about it. You can see why Spirit would be drawn to such a place. He looks Spirit up and down and knows that she's wearing all black, just like the lighthouse. I'm noticing a bit of a theme. Is black your favorite color? Black isn't really a color at all. It's the absence of color. It's a void. Like me. Spirit smiles. Nature abhors a vacuum. You're not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The lapping waves on the shore of the coast set a romantic tone. The fog that surrounds Spirit everywhere she goes blends perfectly with the mist rolling up over the rocky shoreline. She's at one with this place, and so are you. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of water because my throat is getting dry. I know she's blushing. She's cute. I'm curious what flowers are on her hat because I've seen those before. <coughs> oh my goodness. The piece doesn't last long, however, as the lighthouse lets out an eerie howl like a monster dying. A spiraling black light stretches out across the sky. Spirit has to yell at you just to be heard. Oh yeah, it does that! The light and the sound recede and the two of you sit in silence. Spirit lays the towel down and then pats on it gently. Clearly she wants your company, so you oblige. When you do, she takes out some sunscreen and hands it to you. She goes, oh, <laughs> I'm scared. It's gonna be a mini game. I already have a feeling. Oh. You're not exactly sure what to do. Is this an invitation to get in a little hands-on action? What else could it be? Um, thanks. Thanks for to bring my own when I uh, lost my memory and fell into the ocean. No problem. I figured as much. Okay, good. We're not. We're not gonna be. No pulling that. That like mega. Like we're we're not trying to be like Trapper, who's like a bonehead. We ain't doing that. <laughs> We're, we're gonna be gentlemen. Spirit turns away while you saw the lotion all over your body. <laughs> oh god. Do you need any help reaching those difficult spots? Bruh, she can put sunscreen on me! I'm ready for this. Is she, is she gonna have cold hands though? I can't. Ugh, I don't like cold hands. You see a hand float around your back. Sure, why not? She goes strangle me. Spirit's hand on your back is eyes cold, but she has a soft touch. When she's done, she takes care of herself. You watch the spirit apply sunscreen to herself in the most unique way, by floating her own hand around her back to spread it on. Hey, I, She's in pieces, I forgot about that, so she probably doesn't need help with the sunscreen. Come on, our floating hand ability. I thought the shards of glass sticking out from her. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> On her floating hands ability, say nothing, ask about the shards of glass sticking out from her. I feel like if we comment on anything, she's gonna get mad. Do I say nothing? Oh lord have mercy. The hand? Are you sure? Bruh, if I die, if I die, it's fine. At least we'll, we'll have unlocked her death. If I let your hands just float around me like that, you can reach things way easier than I can. It's almost like you're some kind of superhero. I'm glad you get a kick out of it, but floating severed limbs isn't exactly the type of superpower you think to wish for as a kid. 
I'd much rather be able to read minds. Maybe then I understand why some people act the way they do. Don't kill me, miss. Tell her you're actually jealous. Apologize. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, miss. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even think about it like that. Apologize and tell her you're actually jealous. If she, if I say that, she's gonna chop me up. I have a feeling. Oh god, and I can't save in between. Okay, Ooh, we're doing this. We're doing this. Um. 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 I'm sorry. Tell her you're actually jealous. Let me think. I'm <laughs> jealous. Oh god, if she, okay, I'm listening to you, but if she chops us in pieces, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, but I'm honestly jealous. Maybe you should lighten up. Oh! Yeah, okay, we died. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> oh, I had a feeling we were gonna get murdered. Okay. Oh, wait, I can just hold this. Uh, thanks. Uh, sure, why not? Mm, say nothing. Look on and wonder, not sure exactly what's appropriate to say in the moment. While you're staring at Spirit's back, her head turns around and notices you looking at her. I'm sorry, is something wrong? I was just thinking about how you must have gone through to end up like that. It has been horrible. It was worse than death. At least death ends eventually. But I wouldn't want to forget it. It literally made me who I am right now. Truth is, I could pull all these bits of glass that are stuck in my flesh out right now if I wanted to. But I don't want to. Each shard is a reminder of what my father did to me and what the world did to him. That's why I refuse to play the universe's game. I hate the idea that I'll be forced to succumb to the pressure the way he did in the end. The way that fear and anger filled him up and it came bursting out. The way his misery flooded our home and drowned us all. Yeesh. It's hard not to think about revenge, the dragon inside me. It's doing to me what the world did to him. I have to fight it, even though it gives me strength. I must maintain my control. <laughs> no, it's alright. We got one of the death endings. You're stronger than he ever was, I'm sure of it. I appreciate that, Celeste. Hey! She liked that. I suppose a little help isn't a bad thing. In life, in love, this world is a lot to endure alone. Maybe I could use a little assistance reaching my delicate toes for a bit of lotion, you know? Having your body contorted into these vengeful poses, it really does a number on my joints. It rubs the lotion on its skin. Stop, narrator. Repeat theme. Oh gosh, it's a mini game. Break. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. Mini game time. Mini game time. I didn't say. Okay. Save. Okay. Um, let's go. Ready. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, wait. We're loading. We're loading back up. We're loading back up. I can do that. That was like one of the easiest ones. Okay, whoo, we got it. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, we got that one. Not bad. Oh lord, have mercy. Oh no. No! She's gonna murder me. Okay, no, we gotta reload. <laughs> we gotta reload that one. <laughs> we gotta do this. Come on, we can do this. Ready. Okay, that's one. Perfect. That's another perfect. Oh, frick. Okay. We can do this. We can do this. Oh, no. Okay, one more time. I don't know if that was good. Oh, I'm gonna load again. <laughs> I feel like this is gonna end bad. She's gonna kill me. Ready. Oh, 
I can get good on that one. Oh man. Oh no. Nope, not good. Oh god, I'm bad at this. <laughs> no, no, no. We're gonna get murked. <laughs> get three out of two? Oh man. Oh, come on, I can get a perfect. Oh man. Oh man. Oh no, she's gonna kill us. She's gonna kill us. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, she was that one. She was mad at that one. I've not seen that one. Oh gosh, no way. <laughs> Bruh, no, nah, she's gonna she's gonna kill us. I have to get this good. Oh gosh, okay. Okay, perfect. We got one perfect. Oh, that's not bad, but we need another perfect. Okay, we got that one. Oh. Oh! Okay, not bad. Oh! Okay! Okay, we're gonna just continue. We got this earlier, okay? We, we got, we got, we, okay, hopefully she's happy. We'll save on another save. We'll save, um, right here. Just in case. Well, I suppose the lotion made it to where it was supposed to go eventually. And you aren't too incredibly wasteful. I'm not a woman who believes in rushing through things just to get them done. If there is a next time, I'm sure we'll do even better. Uh-uh, I'm not good at these spinny things. You look up at the lighthouse, its ominous dark form hovering above this moment between spirit and yourself. Evil as it clearly is, in this case it does you a solid by blurting out another ominous moan and bursts the black light that rescues you from this awkward silence. <laughs> hey, a space not a spaceship. <laughs> a pirate ship! From seemingly out of nowhere, an ancient looking ship appears in the water. It glows, itself a thing of death, a spirit of a ship that once sailed these seas centuries ago. A tattered black flag whips in the ocean air above the ship as it careens toward the shore. Before crashing on the rocks, it must have been drawn in by the lighthouse. You hear the distant shouting of sailors as the old wooden ghost ship breaks up and sinks into the water. Oh right, it does that sometimes too. Should we uh, do something? Nah, the sharks will take care of it. <laughs> Whoop. Within a minute, the ocean is quiet, again except for the waves. Note to self, hunger sharks. But these time traveling pirates, or whoever they were, you're half sure you saw one of those skull and crossbone flags, aren't the only ones drawn here today. It's Wraith! He has emerged from the palm trees behind you. What the frick, Wraith? Dude, we're having a moment! You're ruining this! Wraith, you're ruining this for me! This is my waifu! We're trying to look cool in front of her! I didn't come here to break up your date or something. You, you totally came here to break up her date. I came here for that. For what? Rake points to the lighthouse. It is indifferent to his intention. I've been seeing it in my dreams. Shining its strange light on me. Can't avoid it through the woods and walls. Nothing seems to stop it from reaching out to me. Duh, it's a haunted lighthouse. It does that to everyone at some point. You're no more special than me, those dead pirates, or that mermaid I saw washed up on the shore that one time. Ew. Mermaids, by the way, aren't even close to as beautiful in person as they are in movies. More sea witch than underwater princess, if you get my drift. It's all part of a vast conspiracy, an epic river of lies that runs beneath the island, or something. Pretty sure I figured it out, the basics anyhow. If you come with me, I can... You can get cut! Spirit waves are katana nearly trimming a couple buttons off Rafe's tropical top. He takes a hint and backs away a few steps slowly. For the quiet guy, he never really shuts up. Okay, be that way, you'll see. Alone at last, tension broken, deathly moans quiet, and Wraith banished back to wherever he hangs out. You scoot closer to Spirit, breathing in the damp, foggy air that seems to emanate from her. It's quite not clear how that whole fog thing works, but you don't even care. You're feeling this moment. 
Spirit seems to be feeling it too. She starts to adjust her robe and you get a peek at the bathing suit underneath. <laughs> hey, saucy! <laughs> For someone who seems intent on proving how little she cares about what everyone else thinks, she put a lot of work into getting into that suit. She's got straps for days. However, you're so focused on what's happening with Spirit, you don't see the next interruption coming. And Claudette and Dwight burst in on you and interrupt whatever you were doing. It doesn't even seem like they were worried they bumped into lunch. We're here to make a very dramatic announcement. Well, technically, we're here to invite you to join us back at the beach. Where we'll be making a very dramatic announcement. It's hard being the producers and the hosts. Aren't survivors supposed to work in groups of four? When you arrive at the beach, you realize you were set up. Despite promising an announcement, Dwight and Claudette simply stand quietly. This isn't at all what was promised. Wait a minute. There's no announcement here. But there is. A me! Gosh dang it, right? Go! Why does he keep freaking ruining my dates with spirit? You got mud in yours, friend. I told you, get lost. Don't you see? Lost is what I am. And so are you. But I know the way out. I've got a map back in my secret lair. Literally. And figurative. Yeah, I know the difference. That's why you should ditch spirit and come spend the rest of the night with me instead. Bruh! Wraith is getting confident. Yeah, he got stalker vibes. You got a secret lair? Damn it! Who said anything about a secret lair? I said I've got, um, sap in my secret hair. There's a flap on my secret chair. Don't change the subject. Oh, <laughs> her spirit's face. Don't ask me what he's talking about. I'm trying to make a mess of the first nice day I've had in... I don't know how long, because it's not even clear what year it is, but in a while. I'm not about to be ditched for the likes of you. It's not me messing things up like I keep trying to tell you. It's this dang island. I've come to accept the difficult truth. What's happening here? Well, I'm convinced that it's our fate. It's not, it's not anyone's decision. It's simply the way it will be. There's no use fighting it. What would you even know about fighting? All you know is hiding in your spooky little secret hair, crying like a baby while ringing your little bell. <laughs> oh yes, I will hydrate. Dude, yeah, Wraith turned into a full-on stalker. <laughs> I'm gonna save though, just so these I... Because I have a feeling that we're going to get mugged. So don't tell me what I can and can't fight back in. I was born a fighter and a dragon lives inside me. I can't not fight even when all I, all I might want to do is hide. Don't you see this giant hat? It's a metaphor. Mercman. <laughs> if I do have a fate, my fate is to win every fight that comes my way. Got it? Fault. Oh, you hide. I've seen you hide. You do your little, your phase walking routine. What do you call it? That? It's basically cloaking, and we all know that cloaking is a type of hiding. Folks, you cloak. I don't cloak. I'm not a cloaker. I phase walk out in the open. You just can't see me. You have no idea what they're talking about, but this sure sounds like some video game community forum thread. Minutua, if there were ever such a thing. Not that you know about that either. It sure doesn't seem like Dwight and Claudette are going to stop this, so it's on you. Ahem. I think I was brought here to make this choice, so I'm going to do that now. And I choose... Bruh. I don't want to get murdered. <laughs> Waifu! When it comes down to it, neither of these two seem easy to love. I mean, damn, Spirit literally has broken sh glass shards sticking out of her, but she has a certain charm to her gloom. Spirit and I were actually having a nice time. Besides, if it's my fate to end up on this island, well, to hell with fate, really. And don't take this the wrong way, Wraith, but the amount of awkwardness you pack into a single day? No wonder you're so skinny. All that second guessing yourself must burn a lot of calories. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Celeste, we're gonna get murdered. No offense taken. It's, yeah, okay, it's true. I can be a little awkward, I guess, sometimes. Right, so I'm gonna stick with Spirit. Spirit breathes a sigh of relief. Got enough revenging to do without having to kill you and Wraith too. Oh god. <laughs> Have mercy on our souls. Spirit walks you around a corner to show you something that she discovered in this place and knew was meant to be connected with her journey. A cherry tree. 
It's just a small sapling, but it's begun to sprout flowers. It doesn't make sense to see a cherry tree here, in this place. It also doesn't make sense to see a ghost in a black bathing suit, so you just accept it. A spirit steps up to the tree, a cold breeze pulls some petals off, and they come cascading through the air around the both of you. Oh, <gasps> bruh, scenario! Look at us! Bruh. You know the meaning of the cherry blossom? They're beautiful, but also quite symbolic. Of course, like all good symbols, their meaning is pretty complicated. What do they mean to you? For many people, being among cherry blossoms is like being at a celebration of life. People travel great distances just to be near their vibrant beauty. However, as beautiful as they might be, they aren't magical, they're simply flowers. They quickly die and fade away, and for this reason, they're also a symbol of fleeting nature of life, of our fragile mortality. In a way, it's the specter of looming death that calls attention to this special moment to see and appreciate life. How does that duality make you feel, Salon? I don't know, man. Empowered or frustrated? Right. She's she seems frustrated about everything, but I mean, it might be empowered. The knowledge that life and death are a cycle has always given me peace. Accepting the fleeting nature of life, like the beauty of a flower and bloom, all allows me to appreciate the moment without being too hung up on what comes next. As you explain, Spirit's face begins to look sad to you. You're not sure why. It's not the happiest topic, life and death, but why should that matter? And then it dawns on you. Spirit has been trapped in this ghastly state of death with no hope to cycle back. No rebirth. Her moment of blossoming life long gone. That scary time of death and decay that comes after the good part. That's Spirit's eternity. I feel like an idiot. I wasn't talking about you. I wasn't even thinking about you. I just... oh. You just answer from the heart. I can't let that bother me. Our priorities are not the same. <gasps> no! Reload! <laughs> where is our, where is our load? 140, 140, 151. Okay, reload! <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make her cry. <laughs> Posture check. Yes. Okay, we're gonna save right here. We'll save at 49. Empowered, frustrated, unsure. I mean, frustrated. As you look at the tree and consider Spirit's question, you reflect on your own current predicament. Stranded here, no understanding of why, no control. The beauty of this island, the attention of such an interesting companion, it should bring you joy, but it comes at the price of being completely confused and hopeless. Look down and see a crumbling cherry blossom on the ground at your feet. As you stare at it, something begins to rage inside you. Like a dragon! How can anyone find comfort even for a moment with death and decay looming, looming on the horizon? It makes me so frustrated. It makes me so mad. I want to do something about it. I want to strike back against this shitty reality. A Spirit lets you go off, staying calm despite your bubbling rage. She must know thoughts like this. Is that why she asked you? So that you'd see things from her point of view? I want it to be alive. You feel connected to her at this moment more than you have at any point before. You wonder, does she feel the same? Once the fallen cherry blossom represented the souls of samurai warriors, those with noble characters, those who did not fear death, those who were killed in the greatest sacrifice to honor their emperor. Their lives were short, but their purpose gave them beauty. Those warriors saw death coming, but they never despaired. They stood and faced it. They held their swords and shook down their fear. But despite the samurai spirit that lives on in me, in my noble bloodline, my life has ended, but my death continues to stretch on. The cycle is frozen. This cherry tree is not real, though its petals fall, they soon replenish. It's as if it were installed here by someone. You watch the spirit chooses her words very carefully. By something with no respect for the balance of life and death. Oh gosh. We're sorry to interrupt. You know we don't believe you, right? <laughs> yep. This time, we've got a real good reason, and it has nothing to do with us being manipulated by an unseen force, because that's definitely not happening. Nobody accused you of that, but okay. We're just here to tell you that it's time for dinner, silly. Get it while well, it's hot. Guess it's time to go or whatever. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I enjoyed it. Me too. 
Hey, we're doing pretty good. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it written all over your face. You're shining and that's just not... That's not just the remaining ink to sweat from spending an afternoon hoarding a psycho killer. No, no, you really are feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry, I'll keep your dirty little secrets. <laughs> but enough gentle ribbing, it's time to get back to business. All the um, appetizing singles have arrived for dinner, including Trickster. <gasps> Trickster's back! Wraith is here too. We're not going to gag where we cram them all on the screen at the same time again, so just believe me. They're all here, and they're just as sexy and demented as you remember them. <laughs> With your love on the line, everyone is being very careful not to offend you by saying the wrong thing. Congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm as surprised as you are that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, but because you just met them yesterday. However, since Trapper seems like the biggest long shot to end up holding onto your heart, he throws caution to the wind and speaks up. It's a pretty small consolation prize for being the least loved killer on Murderous Island, but hey, letting them have this one moment in the spotlight is the least we can do, and heaven knows they won't do any better than that. If I'm dying, so I'm eating what I want, you're all eating it too. Lamb shank, rare. Salt, pepper, no sauce is allowed. And serve it with one single piece of broccoli so Wraith won't complain. Okay, I'm fine with that. I can eat that. I like broccoli. Gives me horrible gas. Ew, gross. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Buddy, wait till you smell what rare lamb does to my bowels. It's awesome. Dinner will be served shortly, but certain power brokers would like to know about your day. Would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You had an interesting day, that's for sure, but how you would describe it to the others? Say too much or too little and it could affect your standing with the group. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, um, we're saving. Uh, I'm scared. Okay, don't just sit there saying nothing. Nothing is not an option. Be coy and gush about your date. Oh, frick, I don't want to be murdered. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, thanks for following, Only Spoons. <laughs> I like your name. Oh gosh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Be coy. Gosh, about your date. Um. I feel like she's not gonna want to know much. Be coy. Oh gosh, I hope she's happy. Yeah, it wasn't really a date, more like two people avoiding everyone else and choosing to be alone, but doing it in a relatively close proximity to each other. <gasps> yes! Okay, we did it right. That's exactly right. Couldn't have not said it anything of value better myself. Spirit is clearly happy with the way you portrayed the date. No surprise, she doesn't like keeping wow! going into her business. Oh wow, thanks for the raid, Only Spoons! <laughs> Welcome! We're playing some, uh... I think it's called Hooked on You. It's the Dead by Daylight, um, uh, visual novel, dating sim. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Let's continue. Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now, and they are all very tired. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That's a dreary supernatural horror thriller set in Antarctica. Not a charming parody dating sim set in an undisclosed tropical paradise. Oh, you started doing it as well? Ooh. Um, which character are you guys trying to go for? Like, which route? I'm doing good. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Oh, gosh. Everything froze for a second. <laughs> oh, Huntress. Ah, uh, we're going for spirit. <laughs> she's very cute i like her a lot her her design in this game is is 10 out of 10. but i have a feeling it wraith has been really coming for our booty this day yes her design's really cool i like it a lot okay let's see bony appetite oh god god don't you mean bomb no, almost everything we serve has a lot of bones in it, even the vegetables. Oh, gross! <laughs> Impossible to avoid on this island. Everyone eats without speaking. 
I'm kind of like worried because we're only every time there's an option to pick amongst all the killers we always pick spirit and I'm like are they gonna murder me for doing that I hope not we've only died once in this game tensions are rising both of the sexual and deadly variety when everyone finishes Dwight and Claudette come back oh thanks for following Kenny the caveman hey cool name Dwight and, uh, and Claudette come back to clean up the table. They linger around you as they pick up your plate, take your napkin, and dust crumbs off the table. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, it's okay. What would you like to say to the servants? Uh, oh gosh. Thank them. Your top-notch services... Oh, your top-notch services is much appreciated. Everyone, if you would please be so kind as to follow us to the fire pit. We greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is going to happen. Something that will change everything. Oh no, what's happening? You can go willingly or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice, tough cookies. Did you have a choice on how you said that, dweeb? Gosh dang, Trapper. Yes, and I immediately regret how I did. Good, something needs to change around here. Fire is rebirth. Fire illuminates the soul. I hope the fire isn't too smoky. Smoke hurts my eyes. I have pretty sensitive eyes. I'm also horribly afraid of it. The fire, I mean, not my eyes. Because of childhood trauma involving fire. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, welcome. <laughs> oh, I like that little, your little uh, emote. And finally, everyone starts moving toward the fire pit. If only to get away from Wraith's complaining. <laughs> Poor Wraith, man. No one likes him for some reason. You take a seat on a comfortable log, feeling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for the other killers to take their places. Wondering who will want to tell a story this time. Will narrator tell a story? I bet they've got a stunningly creative mind. Hey, you think? Are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? Doesn't seem fair. Everyone makes their way in, but something unexpected happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. Something almost always seems to be happening here, so nothing is probably not a great sign. Oh gosh. Are they gonna make me pick? Am I gonna be murdered? Are they gonna roast me over the fire? Oh no, I was too attached to the spirit. Oh cool, and now everyone's looking at you. So, you know, do something. Should I pick someone to tell a story or we could play charades? Boggle. Oh, well, we were actually thinking, why don't you tell us a story? Oh no, oh no. Wraith points his spine and skull staff thingamajig at you. You duck out of its way. Who knows what that thing can do? Probably shoots lasers. <laughs> Try not to bore us. We're just very interested in you. Don't speak for me, Huntress. Now you can't tell if you're warm with the fire or if it's your nerves heating up. I know that the fire is right here, but maybe if we stop talking about it all the time, we can start to pretend it's not here and doesn't, you know, threaten to burn us all alive. He's not supposed to hear me. Get out of here, Wraith. Celeste was about to make an important decision about telling a story or not. Oh lord. Oh lord. Oh lord. Oh lord. Oh lord. Uh, um. I don't know what to do. Fine, I'll tell a story or I'm, I'm not the storytelling type. They want me to tell a story. So I guess I'm gonna have to... We're doing it. Sure, I'm game to tell a story. Jesus Christ, trickster. What the frick? Where does he even come from? I hope it's a mystery. Uh, okay, so what type of story do you want to tell? A romance. A adventure or action? I'm thinking a romance. I'll tell a romantic story. About two lovers who take poison together and dive homing at the mouth? Or about two strong hunters who meet when they both try to bludgeon the same wily wolverine? Not quite. It's about my parents. They met at a party in college. He was hosting. She'd been dragged there by some friends. They couldn't have been more different, and yet, as the night went on, they were drawn to each other. She made fun of his taste in music, and he took an interest in her major, women's studies. They were married within two months. A bit soon to know if you can trust someone, don't you think? It's so sweet! Oh, he liked it. Exactly. I learned a lot about love from them, if you know. You know, some people don't need years to get acquainted with their partner. Love could spark from a mere look across the campfire. Now you've got their attention. Each killer is furiously attempting to catch your eye from across the fire pit. 
Except for Tris uh, Trickster, who has wandered over to the bar and is loudly playing his own music on headphones to drown you out. Gosh dang it, Trickster. Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. Sorry, but this narrator keeps it real. We can't just end there. So who else would you like to hear a story from tonight? We look from killer- oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. We're saving. <laughs> panic! Panic! Everyone panic! Okay. Oh no, it's alright! You can go, go to bed! I done. Dude, if, if anyone who raids, you should like- You've been through a really long stream probably, so you're gonna be tired. So take care of yourself. Drink a lot of water, have some snacks, and rest up. But yeah. Definitely. You don't- you, No one has to explain themselves, you're good. Streaming can take a lot of energy out of you. Okay, you look from killer to killer, trying to decide who might be the most entertaining. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. Bruh, they gonna roast me if I pick her again. She's our waifu though. We must. We must pick her. We're going for her, so we must. I suppose I could tell a story. I don't really want to, but anything I say is sure to be better than whatever you get out of anyone else in this group. Like all good stories, I stole this one from someone in the past who is dead now and can't do anything about it. Oh my god. It's called The Bride. Or technically, I suppose, The Fiancé. One winter, a young couple decided that the next spring they would be married. The two were madly in love and could not wait for the snow to melt so they could join in matrimony and unite their souls for eternity. Per the latest bridal trends, they decided to have their wedding ceremony at the edge of the woods by a beautiful shabby cheek farmhouse. Together they spent months planning the details of the wedding. The two created invitations, figured out seating arrangements, and tasted 100 cakes before settling on the perfect one. They chose Lilikoi? Lilikoi, by the way. So fancy. When it came time to figure out the decorations, however, the bride, or the fiancé, I guess, since she wasn't actually married yet, wanted to take the lead and set the style. After all, her boyfriend had been wearing cargo shorts and open toe sandals for pretty much their entire relationship, so he was definitely not to be trusted. <laughs> Having decided on such a lovely natural setting for the ceremony, the fiancé decided that she would create unique floral arrangements from the local wildflowers that surrounded the farmhouse. As soon as the sun rose on the first day of spring, she set off into the woods. Each day, she spent hours mapping out where the best blooms could be found, and prepared to pick them herself the morning of the wedding so that they'd be at the height of their freshness and beauty. Enamored with the incredible variety of flowers in the woods, she surveyed the bride, or the fiancé, since they had not been married, became obsessed with knowing just how many there were so that she could choose the absolute best. When the fateful morning of her big day finally came, the fiancé told her husband-to-be that she had one final errand before the wedding. Excited for the ceremony to come, she dressed in her beautiful white gown and set off into the woods to gather flowers. Treading carefully, she followed her route selecting only the best stems and collecting them in a basket. However, when she came upon a once familiar clearing, something was not as she had expected. Somehow it was more beautiful now than it had ever been before, and just on the edge of her view was a new bush filled with blossoms, so vibrant and colorful. She became dizzy just looking at them. But the fiancé ignored her sudden spell and pressed ahead, scooping up flower after flower. And every time she did, she noticed just further ahead and possibly even more beautiful blossoms. Carried by the sweet fragrance of spring air, the bride, or the fiancé, crept farther and farther into the woods. Until she turned a corner, stepped over a mossy fallen tree trunk, and realized she had been here before. Ooh. Oh, welcome! But this wasn't the clearing she remembered, or at least not how she remembered it. Flowers were suddenly overripe, decaying, falling from their stems into festering moldy piles on the floor. Where bees had been, now only flies buzzed. Where the scene of flowers had once intoxicated her, the odor of mildew now made her sick. She turned and looked back, but the path was dark. Into a shadowy glen she walked and walked and walked. That day as guests gathered at the farmhouse, the fiancé was nowhere to be seen. Her friends, family, and love began to look for her, but to no avail. 
They searched the pasture, the tree line, and into the forest, but there were no beautiful wildflowers or young lovers to be seen. Just old dead trees, trampled vines, and moss-covered rocks. The fiancé stayed a fiancé for eternity, always wandering, looking for fresher blossoms to clip, but never finding them. Distracted by a never-ending search for perfection, unable to see that you are loved for who you are. Out there all alone. I thought it was beautiful and sad. Just like someone we know. <laughs> Dang, that was intense. Welcome back, Holoco. It has been a while. <laughs> How was story time? A lot of people like to take pot shots at sequels, but I think every good story deserves a follow-up. When you think it's the end, the sequel is almost never as rewarding as the original. That's why I'm much more of a fan of the episodic story of, uh, style of storytelling. Knowing that the series takes a lot of pressure off of any individual installment and builds a greater sense of community between audience and creator. Tell me, Celeste, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? Uh, um, uh, yeah, yikes. Don't answer that. We don't actually care. We're just here to make sure that we seamlessly move on to the next segment of the evening. Oh god, okay, I thought it was a choice. God forbid my small talk get in the way of a romantic twilight moment. Dwight, I'm gonna need you to shut your yak trap. You know that we need to get back to that thing we do whenever we're not on screen. Okay, okay, you have fun tonight and try not to wink wink end up dead. Why did you say the words wink wink out loud? And what kind of double entendre are you getting at with the end up dead thing? Dwight is physically incapable of winking. Not since the accident. And you do know that all of these people are respectable criminals with double-digit kill counts, right? Well, except for Spirit. She really doesn't belong here. She's strictly a victim, not a perpetrator. No wonder she's pissed. Did I hear somebody trash-talking Spirit? Deal me in. What do you say we take this talk to the hot tub so I can soak this bod while I roast that ghost with some killer hot takes? Please, enough of talk of burns. Things that are lit are getting blazed. It's enough that these activities have to be set next to a literal fire. Must I be surrounded by figurative flames as well? What if we turned and ran as far away from this place as we could? Just you and me. On those spindly legs? You'd probably tire before you got too far. If it's running away to some place more secluded, Celeste is after, they should obviously join me. Have you seen these legs? Pure power. Not that my walk speed really reflects my giant stature, but that's because I choose to move slowly for stealth reasons. It's my own choice, and it's completely logical. Why is everyone so obsessed with comparing themselves to each other and creating drama? And so over all that. Don't you get it? Society wants to trick you into fighting with each other so that corporations can swoop in and sell you fake solutions to all your fabricated problems. I'll be sitting in the shade and drinking something locally sourced while thumbing through a public domain novella printed on recycled paper because I refuse to play their game anymore. It's like she's actively trying to be as unappealing as possible. Does it really turn anyone else on, or just me? <laughs> Despite Trapper's insatiable appetite, it seems his attention, along with the attention of everyone else, is still on you. For the moment. She's a total tsundere. We're going for her. <laughs> if you could, I don't know, just pick one of us and maybe we could all move on with our lives, or um, you know some special projects we might have going on. You heard him. Who will it be? Who will you head off with for an evening activity? I'm just saying, you may not get a ton of chances to date around like this before your time on Murder's Island comes to a close. And no, I'm not satisfied with that name either, but with this streaming reality TV dating show boom happening, it's pretty much all that was taken. Ah, yes. Posture check. And stretchies. Stretching. <laughs> oh my goodness. Which killer will you pick? And yes, we're back to excluding Trickster because ugh, that guy. Waifu. God, I hope we don't get murdered because of this. Oh, you picked me. Yay. Sorry, that was rude of me. Despite... I despise phoniness, so I should be honest with you. You make for interesting company, and I love the idea of winning over these other killers at all costs, even when I hate the game and prize, but I had a long day. Floating, subverting expectations, grinding my teeth as I imagine sweet, sweet revenge. It takes a lot out of me. So don't stop bringing your A-game, alright? It might seem like I hate everything and getting to really know who I am is an impossible task not worth trying, but too bad. You won't know unless you search deep inside yourself and bring everything you got. 
or just say the exact right thing at the right time and melt my cold heart in an instant. I don't know the rules. You're any better than you do. Okay, let me save real quick, miss. Just because I want to make sure I get it right with her. See you at the bar, I guess. Was that bad? Should we have left her alone? You arrive at the bar to find Dwight and Claudette both holding cocktail shakers surrounded by a bevy of bottles for assorted booze. Who's ready to get wasted? <laughs> well, I don't drink, so not me. You really don't drink ever? Is that like you can still just fall out a hole in your stomach or thing? Or uh... I don't drink alcohol because alcohol is poison of the body and the mind. I don't need to act like a fool to have a good time. Oh God, I'm sorry. Then why did you choose a mixology lesson as your romantic nighttime activity? Everyone knows this kind of date is just an excuse to get loaded up on booze and make terrible decisions. It's true, not a single person has ever learned anything at one of these things. Right, now that's not true. You learned how to tie a cherry knot in a stem using only your tongue. Whoa, whoa. Who ordered the soda with a splash of my private fitness? Because that's off the menu. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love these guys. Hope I know what I'm drinking to forget tonight. <laughs> oh no. Mixology is a real thing and it doesn't require alcohol to be interesting. I'll have you all know that I worked at a restaurant before I was violently executed. Oh jeez. By your father? On whom you will have your bloody vengeance? Right, right. Well, so be it. How about you, Celeste? You drink? Um, stay sober. I have liver issues. I got the impression that tonight will be a night I want to remember perfectly, so I'm gonna pass on the alcohol drinks. Here, here. Alcohol is a false escape. Besides, it's not like sober people can't have fun. You watch as Spirit picks up a plump cherry and roughly stabs a little plastic sword through it. Cherry juice splatters everywhere, and its little fruity guts flop out onto Spirit's lap. Oopsie. I love the upsides of wearing black. It hardly shows stains. No take backsies. So, lovebirds, what drink shall we make? A fancy beer, a zombie, a bloody Mary, or a dark and stormy? Um. Mm, um. What do we think she would like? I don't think a fancy beer, a zombie. I feel like that would be hurtful. I'm stuck between a bloody Mary and a dark and stormy. Would she like a Bloody Mary? <laughs> wait, what do you mean wait? She's like all dressed in black, so she might like a Dark and Stormy. Oh, Dark and Stormy? I'm leaning towards Dark and Stormy too. Let's see. How about a Dark and Stormy drink for my Dark and Stormy date? Oh, she likes it! Okay, that one's cute. Ayy. Please allow us to demonstrate how the dark and stormy is made. First, rum, or in this case, rum extracted and a bit of apple juice is poured over ice. And then fresh ginger beer is added in. Garnish with a lime wheel. And drink. The end. Do you think you're up to the challenge of replicating this recipe? Oh god! Uh, um, let me think. Um, is ginger beer... Ginger... Beer... Um, rum extract, and then there's something else, but I missed it. Replicating rum substitute and ginger beer over ice. Is that it? Don't forget the lime wheel. Okay, lime wheel. Lime wheel. Rum substitute, ginger beer over ice with the lime wheel. Not sure I appreciate your tone, but yes, you got it. You're natural, a sassy natural, and you and Dwight might have more in common than... Don't you dare. Spirit seems to be in a lovely mood as she sips her dark and stormy. She's not even rolling her eyes at your petty behavior. <laughs> On cue, a literal dark storm begins to make its way from way in from the ocean. You taste your own dark and stormy as you watch the clouds approach. It's quite refreshing. Isn't this fun? Honestly, it's the most drama-free fun I've had since I got here. We're saving just in case she asks us any loaded questions. And since you picked a simple but delicious drink, we've got plenty of time to relax. Want to make out a little? 
You breathe in a sip of your drink and immediately begin coughing before you can get a yes out. Lightning strikes a palm tree on the beach and immediately starts a fire. The activity ends abruptly as Claudette and Dwight usher the two of you away from the moor. <laughs> We're gonna make out! That's not fair! Why did they end that? No! <laughs> Gosh dang it. How dare. The gang's all together again on the volleyball court. Seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was. Oi, feels like I've been here a lot longer than that, actually. It's so late that the sun is already beginning to rise. Better get this over with quickly so that I mean you can get some beauty rest. I do not recommend the eternal damnation of perpetual narratorium. <laughs> Good thing you've really used your time well since then. Really getting to know the gang. The brain, the mongol, the basket case, the psychotic bunny girl. You know, the four types of people. Anyway, everyone is gathered on the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who Celeste chooses. Who's ready for round robin? How round are we talking? No, not to eat, Huntress. Each killer gets two minutes to tell you all about the dream date they have planned for you tomorrow. Wait, I have to date all of them? Or do I pick one? In no particular order, which is a weird thing to mention, right? Almost like the order does matter. Trapper, why don't you go first? You think you deserve it? Even in this case, it's a subtle dig. Shoot. Okay, so... He said the order doesn't matter, but it obviously does. So I guess we're starting with the person I'm least... I have, like, the least heart stuff with. Stop talking. Trapper, without further ado, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable not only in polite society, but within the narrative of this in-world event and also the larger meta-narrative of a dead-by-daylight dating experience? Sometimes you just gotta say it. Why, yes, thank you, I'd love to. So, Celeste, you're thinking of picking me? Well, this is your final warning. Pick me and be punished and rewarded? Tomorrow will suck, probably. I'm not an easy guy to get along with, I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm hiding a secret on this item that will make fans shit themselves with excitement. Oh god. If you like Trapper, you're gonna love it. And if not, you're a maggot. Also, everyone, even competent, sexy ladies in rabbit masks, better stay the hell away from my yacht. And time's up, everyone. Gosh, you'll need to dream about these options so you're ready to choose in the morning. Now go dream about all these swoon-worthy options so that you're ready to make a choice come dawn. Have a swell night. Um, did you two forget to mention something? Only Trapper told us. What? Why did... I didn't get to hear everyone else's. Do I have to reload? Yeah, I'm confused. Is that a thing? Did my game glitch out? Oh gosh, how can we forget? Before you run off to slumber peacefully, there's one more thing to do. No reality surviving survival dating competition parody would be complete, complete without singling out one of our contestants who is already tickering on the edge of a psychological break. And giving them a little push. Hold up, this has been a survival dating competition parody this entire time? And I'm just now figuring out about that? Come on, the signs were there, you just didn't read them. Welcome to Murderer's Island. It's now time to eliminate one of the killers! Oof, it's like butchering, but it hurts even worse. You can't kill a killer, but can you break their heart? Do you dare even try? You mean... Oh, frick! We're gonna have to vote people off the island, and one of them is close to a psychological break, so they might murder us. I'm scared. That's right. Tomorrow, one of these sexy slices will not be eligible to take you on a date. Who's it gonna be? But why? Uh, because it's dramatic? Because it's surprising? Because it's a classic reversal of fate? And it will hurt someone's feelings. Someone dangerous. What's it gonna be, champ? What's your thought process here? Trapper seems like he might throttle you in your sleep if you eliminate him. That being said, at least you'd see him coming. Spirit could be anywhere. She floats and I hear she can disappear. Hard to track. If you get rid of Wraith, you might cry, and although I totally support normalizing men crying and being vulnerable, it just seems like he might be an ugly crier. 
I'm sure she might pretend to be okay with it, but then you'll start seeing her behind every tree. What I'm trying to say is, I don't envy you, boss, so which sociopaths are you eliminating? Bruh. We're gonna eliminate Wraith, because I'm not scared of Wraith. Wraith has been a chill, nice dude. Yeah, he was kind of stalkerish, and he, uh, but I think we can handle him. Huntress was digging through my pockets one night, and then she said some threatening stuff about wanting to take me to a place where no one knew where it was, and I don't trust. Our girl spirit, I, I trust her with my life, because she hasn't killed us yet. And, uh, Psycho Man Trapper, I feel like he'll break my ankles. So, I think we're gonna get rid of Wraith. <laughs> Let's hope I was right, okay? Please. Yeah. Look, I'm here. Oh god, <laughs> Morty. And I'm really getting positive reinforcement from you, Wraithy Poo. Please don't take this personally. It's just my opinion of you and who you are and what you're about deep down as a person and how I don't like it. Like, give me something, you know? A kiss, a wink, hold my hand, finish telling me about all this mysterious stuff you're obsessed with. Or better yet, don't. Wraith rises taller than you've ever seen him and calmly walks to the exit. Before he leaves, he turns to you. When you came here, I thought perhaps you would be different. I don't know how my last bit of hope in humanity hadn't been snuffed out, but it wasn't. It is now. You're just like the rest of them. There's no hope of goodness here. The only thing I can do is try to escape. Or burn everything and everyone to the ground. He leaves. Pretty badass exit. Was not expecting that. Now that you've broken the heart of someone heartless, you should go get some shut eye. And don't worry too much about the broken heart you've left behind. Because, of course, they'll be receiving a consolation prize. They might not get to go home with Celeste when this is all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. That's right, we're sending our limited player home with... <laughs> no! Oh, I hate, I hate everything. Why? <laughs> Their own mostly new, ew, mostly new... Trickster body pillow. The new best thing to the real trickster. It might not hug you back, but it definitely won't try and stab you. And how do we know? Because I've tried it. That's right. It's Dwight tested. Oh my god, Dwight. <laughs> Claudette approved. I hope you sleep well tonight, Celeste. You're my hero for what you've accomplished. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean, knowing that there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. How can you sleep tonight, knowing what you'll do tomorrow? What does he mean? I don't know how you'll do it, but you better go before Dwight and Claudette come back and put you to sleep themselves. You know those two. Schedule, schedule, schedule. Lord, they're gonna murder me. Wow, what a crazy way to end a day. An elimination? I didn't even know it was that kind of a game. <laughs> Let's check in with everyone, especially with our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. We'll see how things go tomorrow, I suppose. I'm not expecting anything. I tend to shut my mind off during hard times. Oh no! I know I seem all excited and devil may care, but the truth is, I'm a really I'm really a pessimist at heart. That tends to happen when your mother is cured by an elk when you're young. Yeah, I didn't know. Well, I guess it's also the only thing you talk about. If you'll excuse me, I think I saw a raccoon over in that tree, and I'm feeling peckish. The wraith? <laughs> oh no. I know I said some things with Celeste get me to the curb, and uh... I just want to say I'm embarrassed for how I acted. Not what I said, though. I stand by it. I want everyone here to, uh... to burn. How would I say things are going? It's a matter of perspective. If Celeste's goal is to impress me, things are going poorly. But if Celeste's goals get themselves killed, they're doing an amazing job. Of course Celeste's into me. Why wouldn't they be? I'm thoughtful, beautiful, surrounded by a calming mist. I've also got great hair. And since I'm technically dead, I'm extremely low maintenance. Look, I don't like to throw the term anime waifu. Woo! <laughs> she knows it! She knows she's the waifu! <laughs> but... If the body pillow fits snugly, you know what I mean? She knows! She knows she's my type! What? No, you're not a part of this. You don't get a confessional. 
It's cool, man. I'm not part of anything, you feel me? I'm not a cog in anyone's machine. I'm my own machine. This whole thing's pretty cute, though. Charmingly low-budget, old-school marketing vibes. Not gonna lie, kinda wish I wasn't so busy right now. I'd definitely be down with a reality show-style dating competition with survival elements. But I got my new album, upcoming tour, finalizing the new sneaker line, producing a limited series on my life, and starting a new social media NFT crypto app, and doing these private gigs over on IP Island. My dudes, you gotta come check it out! IP Island, it's dope! It's where the real killers are hanging out. Fully licensed, no legal drama, lawyers. Take a hike! I'm gonna tell everyone that Trickster said that about them, don't worry. I'm talking your favorite established characters from all over pop culture. That can't be seen on this island. Oh, you probably can't even mention them, like ghost f- Oh! Don't say it! Look, we get it! You're very popular and in demand, but we have a game to get back to and I don't want to get sued. That look. Bruh, you're gonna kill me. Ghost face. Come on! <laughs> Whatever. I don't even care, I'm the trickster. See you around, Celeste. You too, narrator. Frick, man, this boy. This, this, this boy, he needs to stop coming for me, man. I've got my waifu. We'll try and get him next time. But for now. <laughs> um, I have a name, you know. You do? Yeah, seriously. They do not pay me enough to deal with you people. It's my turn? Or is it my turn? What? No, no, it's not your turn. You're sentient water. How are you even sitting in that chair? What's a chair? It's the thing, you're getting all wet. Now it's gonna smell like mildew. Okay, rude. Fine, let's just get this over it. It's your turn, Ocean. Do your check-in. Check-in? I was just looking for the bathroom. Bathroom? Are you serious? It's down the hall to the left. It's okay, never mind. <laughs> We're playing the new Dead by Daylight dating sim. We're going for Spirit, who is anime waifu material. But the ocean is also sentient, and so is the narrator. Never mind, what does that mean? No, not you two. This wasn't meant to be confessional time for literally every character in this game. It's okay, we don't have to confess anything. We've just been working our asses off for two days straight and wanted to sit down somewhere. This chair is wet. Yeah, I think the ocean just peed on it. How is that po- You know what, I don't care. You two are looking pretty pleased with yourselves. I've got something to confess. Oh great, what's it gonna be? You ate glue in the second grade? You cheated on an algebra test once? <laughs> but respectable. <laughs> Watching Wraith get eliminated was the first time in this unending spiral staircase of pain that is my life that I felt even a modicum of joy. Jesus Christ, Dwight! We broke the poor man's heart! And you're freaking... <laughs> oh my god! Every minute that I'm alive is a nightmare. This place, the sun, these sweet sugary drinks. It sounds fun for a long weekend, but for an eternity? The unrelenting rhythm of crashing waves and wailing seagulls. It's like a crescendoing song of evil that makes me question the very foundation of the universe. Why am I here? Why are any of us here? What kind of sentient being would do this? Please erase me from this existence. Make it so I was never born. Pull the plug on this experience and let my soul be free. And please... Please get me out of this polo shirt. Jesus Christ, Dwight. We, we, we were... What's happening? Okay, let's get you to bed, buddy. I don't want you to go to... Oh, I don't want to go to bed. Going to bed means eventually I'll have to wake up. Yikes, huh? That was a weird way to end. Oh, well, what are you going to do? You let the camera roll long enough. Someone's bound to say something crazy. Anyway, seems like everyone's had their shot to annoy me tonight, so hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow's gonna be a doozy. Okay. So we gotta think. We're gonna choose who we're chilling with. I'm a little bit scared only because um, Trapper said he would murder me. Stay with waifu? I'm just like I just don't want to get murdered, you know? Because I neglected everyone. Soft sunlight warms your skin, nudging you awake. Also, you're using a killer crab as a pillow, which is sort of okay with. What's that? You don't know about the killer crabs? Alright, you didn't go on that huntress date. 
You really missed out. It was thrilling, or I guess it would have been. You'll have to play the game again to get that reference, I suppose. Barovian act, how dare you? How dare you redeem a Barovian accent in the middle of a game that is very much dialogue heavy? You pull on your beach attire and splash water on your face. White and clothed approach. Is that look on their face excitement, terror? You notice your stomach flutters with butterflies. Someone's in love. Or you've been infected with zombie butterflies in your sleep. It has happened to you before, but it's probably the love thing. It's time. Claudette gestures over the beach where the killers all stand, flanked by tiki torches. It seemed very reminiscent of a TV show you used to hate watch with your ex. Okay, we are going to mega save right here. Suddenly the message is clear. You're going to declare your affections for a killer in front of several other killers. Hey, isn't Trickster supposed to be here? We paid him good money to make some half-assed cameos in this show. I'm gonna chew his agent out. It is very cute. All of the characters, very cute designs. But before they walk you over for your big moment, don't think we haven't noticed how kind you've been to us, Celeste. I said one nice thing to them and now they're going to want a confession. I did not ask for this. It can't be easy being thrown onto a mysterious island for seemingly no real reason surrounded by terrifying killers trying to manage your most primal impulses. Murder and making out. And you've kept the cool head and treated us for your friendly island host with dignity and respect. So don't tell anyone we told you this, but... Claudette and Dwight look around conspiratorially. Just a little hint for you going forward. Don't try to go all the way with a killer who isn't into you. Relationships are two-way streets, and if you don't have a green light in the other direction, you might end up in the friend zone. The friend zone? That doesn't sound so bad. Where do you think you are exactly? Dead by Daylight doesn't do friends. There are killers and there are survivors, and I'm afraid we can't say more. Okay, so who's into me? Well, that and, like, and Dwight look around conspiratorially again. Well, I've never seen Spirit open up to anyone like she has opened up to you. I've seen her open up the insides of plenty of people, but thankfully for you and for us, that's in a different type of game. Oh, hydrate. Yes, I will. So are you ready? Of course you're not, but too bad we're on a schedule. Yes, it's stretchy. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Posture check. My posture has been relatively good this stream. Which is surprising. Because usually it's god awful. Oh god! Sorry, I got jump scared. You make your way over to the row of hotties, Claudette and Dwight stand off to the side, hands behind their backs. It's been quite the 48 hours, but there are clearly sparks in the air, and I'm not just talking about this rusty chainsaw, although I do recommend staying away from those sparks. It's time for our newcomer to confess their love. Oh god, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Wait, I have to do a drum roll for this. Drum roll! No, you don't, but who cares? Less, who do you choose for your solo date? Can we at least do the flower thing? Dwight, I thought we agreed to keep that between us. No, not that flower thing. The thing where the suitor gets a flower as a symbol of the condescent love and affection. Oh, right, right, I suppose, but no roses. They're such a cliche at this point. Well, that's good because I tried to pick a rose, but I got an ouchie, so I settled for these. Oh, it's so pretty! Beautiful. You've done good, Dwight. This is a lovely bouquet. I hope Dwight saved some of these for Claudette. They're a thing, right? You're getting that vibe too. Just me? Sorry, sorry. You got other things to worry about right now. Celeste, who do you select to receive these flowers and spend the day with you today? Spirit! Let's go! You approach Spirit, peering below the brim of her impressively large hat and into her haunting eyes. Spirit... Since I met you, I've been enchanted by your presence. You've challenged me to be a better person and resisted the urge to show me the sharp end of your katana. For that, I thank you. I'm ready to take our relationship to the next level. And we shall. 
up to the eye of the dark storm that is our reality, to the lantern room of the Black Lighthouse. It's time to see what you're made of, Celeste. Oh god, what is happening? I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> oh no. I thought it might be nice to start the day out on Trapper's Yacht before we head up to the Black Lighthouse. Even if I kind of hate this basic tropical vacation stuff like yachts and snorkeling or whatever, it's good for you to see me in the sun a little bit, at least. There's more to me than what you've already gotten to experience. I know that my whole vibe can be a little dark. The hat, the swimsuit, the plume of floating hair. This wasn't always who I was. I was a normal young woman once. Went to school, hung out with friends. I even had a part-time job working at a restaurant in town. And then, well, I know what happened. Your father, he... Yeah, yeah, he murdered me and I woke as an undead Avenger. That's not what I was getting at. Something else happened to me. I realized I needed to be seen. I don't even know by whom I just... A lot of time when you think about ghosts there are these things... These kind of see-through flickering specters. You imagine reaching out and having your hand go right through them. Okay, but over an accent just finished. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, like that sort of thing. Maybe there's some warpy effect on the world around you. I don't know, it depends on which movie you're watching. But when I died, well, I dare you to try and reach your hand through me. Not really, that's not an invitation, it's rhetorical. Why did I end up this way? Who brought me here to this island? Who knows? I sure don't. I've got my idea. And to end Barovian accent, that'd be insane. But I'm not exactly out there digging around caves or dusting off antiques and trying to find clues and analyze your meanings. I do want to take this experience seriously, though. I want to give the process a chance. Maybe a dumb process, and one that I have extremely little respect for as a person, but you just woke up on this beach with no memory of who you are and where you came from. And rather than freak out and simply try and swim away, you're giving this a chance. Oh god, I'm saving just to be safe. I actually didn't know that swimming away was an option. It's not. However, the fact that you never even tried, I think that means you've got courage. Or an open mind. Or, I don't know, maybe you stuck around because you like someone you met here. Yes. Maybe. While the two of you were getting all deep and philosophically flirty, the yacht pulled up to the shore next to the Black Lighthouse. Last stop! Everybody off! There were other stops? Oh no, not of this trip. Of your life. Sir? Am I being murdered? Spirit rolls her eyes and leaves for the shore. I'm just messing with ya. This is the only stop. Nobody here is really looking out for our fun, so we have to make it ourselves. But no, there are no other stops. Seriously, go. Race you to the poop deck, Dwight. The ship doesn't even have a poop deck. Oh, it will. Oh, oh gross. As you disembark, you see Dwayne and Claudette run, giggling across the ship. Too bad you can't date those two. They seem like they know how to have a good time. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. Oh my gosh. This is it's scary. This is scary. I want to do everything perfect. You arrive at the beach near the majestic black lighthouse. Its imposing form towers above you. You arrive at the beach near- oh, I remember that. A flock of birds circles lazily, no sense of fear or urgency, as if circling a corpse that hasn't moved in ages. I'm excited about today, see? Spirit places her wrist delicately in your hand and presses your fingers down against her skin. It's cool to the touch, but you feel- is that the faintest of pulses? My blood is absolutely pumping! So what happens now? Now I show you something that no one has ever seen up close before. Well, no one who has lived to tell about it. She's not going to kill me, right? Where are you going there? Spirit points to the top of the lighthouse amongst the circling birds. What's actually up there? Have you seen it? Hey, y'all. How's everyone doing? Wraith, we got rid of you. Get out of here. Wraith's always trying to kill my vibe. I feel like this game is mild purgatory for the killers since the survivors are tormenting them. I guess, yeah. <laughs> certainly seems to be taking the whole elimination thing well, or maybe this is the opposite of that. Better not bring it up at all and just hope he doesn't completely melt down. Cut his legs off? What? Uh, hi Wraith, you sure seem chipper today. 
What's with this Western music playing? It's like there's gonna be a duel. <laughs> something strange is definitely going on with this guy. Well, something else strange. Something different than what's usually going on. Wraith takes deep breath, sucking in the ocean air like it's the greatest air that has ever been sucked. Plus, thank you. Thank you for choosing someone, anyone else to go on a date with today. Alone again forever. This is how I was meant to be. I feel alive. Are you done? We're kind of, you know, on that date you just mentioned. I'm glad you're feeling better, Wraith. But like she said, we're in the middle of something. You mind? Oh, right, right, right. So what you doing? Heading up into the eye of the lighthouse? I love it up there. You can really see the whole island from up there. In fact, Spirit, I thought you said no one has been up there and I didn't live to tell about it. But this sounds exactly like telling about it. Technically, I don't think Wraith counts as being alive. I mean, I don't maintain the canon, but... Spirit waves her arms at Wraith from head to toe. And if he's not dead now, he's gonna be when I punish him for interrupting our date. Hey, now we can solve our problems about our hair floating up into and menacing shapes. I'll just be over here, running away, enjoying the view. You know, I think Wraith was kidding about the whole being up there thing. Honestly, the view isn't even of the island. What you can see is mostly ocean, on account of it being, you know, a lighthouse. However, that brings up an interesting point regarding your, how do I say it? Spirit's hand floats up as she scratches her head contemplatively. You don't really, you, know, you don't usually see her at a lost words like this. What's your mortal status? Because despite what our lanky friend seems to think, the lighthouse is not to be trifled with. It's a beacon of death and suffering that brings doom to it from all corners of this world, if not further. Oh god, we're saving. I don't want to die. What is my mortal status? Well, duh, you saw a freaking pirate ship seemingly travel through space and time only to crumble at the rocks beneath this spooky tower. But you decided not to point it out because that would be too romantic now, would it? I think I'm alive. I'm here with you walking this beach, feeling the water on my feet, feeling the sun on my skin. Here, with me, the spirit. Does that really make you alive? I guess I don't know. If you come with me up into the eye of the black lighthouse, you may never return. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Because we have something, I won't deny it. I feel it. I'd hate for you to simply turn to ash. If we were to commit right here and now to figuring this out as friends, we could put that risk off for another time. Just be friends? Ouch, is this her way of letting you down easy? I don't know if I want that friendship. I want you. That's why I chose you. I can't decide this for you. I can only warn you that it may not be safe. You might die up there and there's nothing I can do about it. Go up and maybe die. We're doing it for the waifu! If we die, it's fine. You take a deep breath and think about every particle of sea air as it travels to your body and fills your lungs. It may be the last time you have such a thought, but you feel strangely at peace with that information. I don't need another friend. I want something more. I'd risk my life for it. Spirit smiles quirky devilish smile right this way dang Whew. we're gonna die but it's okay it's for spirit inside the lighthouse is almost pitch black it was seemingly day when you stepped through the door but inside this place is like a void i gotta drink some water real quick the last thing you see as the final race of song leave you is a horrible sight a petrified body laying on the stairs, reaching not up but down as if it had been crawling. Watch your step. Things we do for love. Bruh, this is spooky. When you arrive in the lantern room at the top of the black lighthouse, you breathe a sigh of relief. The light is out and seemingly defunct. Dust kicks the room as though it hasn't been op operated in a century. There's blood in the corner right there. Does, does no one else see that right there? Bottom left. However, somehow, it was just morning a moment ago, but now it's night. What do you mean a moment ago? We've been standing here looking out over the ocean all day. I really enjoyed the peaceful time together if you take it into view, standing in complete silence for hours. It was kind of my perfect date. Really? I don't remember that. I just called it perfect date and you can't be bothered to remember it. What kind of game are you playing with me? 
I want to remember it. It's just that for some reason my mind is completely blank. But hey, I'm not dead. Or you're already dead and have been this whole time. Uh, that's, uh, that's true. Maybe we'll never know. Doesn't look like the light is working. Even turned off, the light has a power to it. The massive lens refracts moonlight through itself. A subtle sparkle that has a hypnotic effect. Maybe that's where the day went, staring into the light as the sun fell on the moonrise. Or rose. Thanks for spending the day with me. I had a really good time. That's it. Don't get me wrong. This is really cool and all. I just... I guess I don't know what I expected. I suppose if you thought you were walking into your death and nothing happened, it might feel a bit anticlimactic. Sorry. Anyhow, it's time to go. Here, let me just flip on the light for the staircase so it's easier to get down. Uh, the stairs look pretty dark. Maybe it spirit is interrupted by a strange hum and then it becomes frighteningly clear to you that switch wasn't for the stairs it was for the main lantern a lantern that's now beginning to power up the faintest smell of burning begins to reach your nose oopsie it looks like maybe that switch wasn't for the stair lights at all now we see who was really alive and who's really dead i suppose so we found to happen sooner or later clam your eyes closed hoping that somehow not looking at the light is helpful to protect you not sure i see the logic in that but if it is magic it kind of defies logic I want to see it, but well, I'm a little scared. Don't look directly into the light. Open your eyes and look only at me. I'll keep you safe. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, God. Oh, 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 okay. Perfect. Oh, not bad. Oh, ouch. You missed completely. Oh no! You missed completely! Oh no, we missed. You missed completely! Oh gosh, no, 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 no! <laughs> we need to reload! Reload! Oh gosh, okay. Nope, nope, that was bad. Okay. Gosh, we need to okay. uh, go up and maybe die. She's gonna... Okay, so let's save right here. Gosh. I'm not good at those spinny games. I'm double saving just in case. <laughs> I'll save right here. Because we're a bit closer to the... guys we live are you okay you seem okay i hope i haven't ruined this by pushing you to do something you weren't meant to do you're so brave maybe not so coordinated but certainly brave i'm so lucky you put yourself through this for me it shows that you're real despite your attempt to resist it the incredible force of energy from the black lights lantern eye refuses to subside no it cannot be ignored and it doesn't matter if you look directly at it or not in the end that was just a trivial game this is real life and real magic you start it now and it its powers penetrates your mind. Jeez Louise, what's it gonna do to me? Hey, been a while. How are things? Ocean, what the frick? Doing good? Feeling more dead or more alive? Yeah, love will do that to a person. Don't worry, it'll make sense soon. Oh god, Ocean, what the frick? You wake to hear spirit's muffled voice. You've got a terrible taste in your mouth, like burnt hair. The air feels damp and smells like ash. Spirit throwing shade. <laughs> I'm not coordinated, I'm sorry! It takes time for the sound to clear, but eventually Spirit's words start to make sense to you. However, it's clear she's talking to someone else, not you. You know how many times people say it's not you, it's me? Well, this time it is you, and it's also me. I can't believe I thought you would change for me. I can't believe I thought what you were doing was sacrifice. You never gave anything up for me. Well, today I saw what love looks like, and it looks a whole lot different than this. 
I don't think you're hearing me, which is weird. Because I'm practically shouting. Nobody breaks up with Trapper. Nobody. What? She's dating Trapper the entire time? <gasps> what? Excuse me. That was my waifu. I swear to God, if he tries to hurt her, I'm gonna throw myself in the middle of it. Oh yeah, fine. Nobody breaks up with Trapper. But I'm not doing that. I'm dumping. Don't say it. I'm dumping even McMillan, and there's nothing you or he can do about it. It's over between us. Or between us, e Evan. Ray and I. Trapper turns his spear and looks directly at you. Do you realize that you're laying on the ground in some weird tunnel? I think that your shouting woke up Celeste. Am I shouting? Shoot, we didn't say, we didn't say! Stay quiet. Say something? Oh no, no, no! I didn't save him for this! Oh no, 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 no. And I can't save now. Say something, stay quiet, fake snore. If I fake snore, uh, they're gonna know right away. Say something, stay quiet. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay quiet. In an attempt to be as quiet as possible, you hold your breath and breathe in place. Sorry we woke you up, Celeste. After what happened, you'd probably be better off sleeping for a bit longer. Things just got out of hand. How do you know? You were talking in your sleep, basically non-stop, until you woke up and then got quiet. What was I saying? I don't know, I don't speak Dutch. <laughs> what? <laughs> just brecken... Just brecken... Netherland? Blitschbar. Yeah, see, there you go again. The jig is up. Oh, the jig, as they say, up. They know you're awake now, and you're going to have to deal with this awkward situation head on. I'm saving ahead of time now. <laughs> Clearly, I shouldn't be here. You two are having a very personal conversation that I don't need to be involved in. I don't even know how I got here. Not here on this island, or here in this creepy tunnel. As far as this island goes, your guess is as good as mine. As far as this tunnel, we brought you here. We, you and Trapper, but... After the lighthouse came on, you blacked out. On your way down, I thought you might have hit your head or something. It's hard to tell what blood is new or old around here. By the way, I wanted to get you someplace safe, so I asked Trapper about it. It's not that I can't carry you. I just didn't feel like it, you know? I hate anything messing with my shards. Trapper, on the other hand, he loves nothing more than having an unconscious body draped over his shoulder. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can suddenly speak Dutch. I could ask Claudette and Dwight for help, but I don't trust them. But you trust Trapper? Dwight can trust her two different things. You might think Trapper can be a real jerk and you'd be right, but you get what you see with it. We brought you down here because we're the only ones who know about this place. It's part of an old tunnel network that connects different places on the island. What's up, guys? Taking island mysteries? My favorite topic. I was just in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd pop in. Gosh dang it, Rage. What the heck? Trapper, you said this place was private. Don't look at me. I didn't tell him about it. Half of the appeal of this spot is getting away from people like him. Well, geez, I can see when I'm not wanted. So you three a thruple now, or... I gotta say, I really didn't get the whole trapper spirit thing, but hey, if it's not my business, I don't stick my nose in it. We were not a thing. Nobody traps the trapper. Not with traps or with relationships. And you do realize you're sticking your nose in our business right now, right? Wow, so hostile. If you don't want to talk about it, just say so. Anyhow, this tunnel has some very interesting features. If you head about 50 meters down that way, you'll find... Get out! Ray flips around just to be doubly sure that trapper is dressing him. I was just leaving. This island is a lonely place, which is great for me. I love to be alone. Trapper, on the other hand, he's quite needy. And after a lot of pursuit, I finally let him catch up to me, and it became, well, I don't want to call it a relationship, because somebody really didn't want to have that talk. But we are more than friends. <gasps> they were more than friends. I dispute the events as told for the record. I don't pursue ice talk, and I lie in wait. Seeing eye to eye was not one of the things we were good at. So I hate to ask, but I did just look into a refrigerator-sized death lamp, so I guess I'm more of a glutton for punishment than I thought. What were you good at? Well, for starters, excuse me, I'll take that question very much. If you know anything about me by now, it's that I'm on a quest for revenge. Exactly what you might not know, Trapper is like a great classical maestro of revenge. Trapper blended behind the mask, the one way to compliment a killer. 
Revenge against friends who had turned their back and betrayed him. Revenge against his father for making him into a monster. Revenge against a barista who wrote Ewan on his cappuccino knowing his name was Evan. Ewan. Ewan? For someone who thinks about revenge as much as I do, Trapper is an inspiration. But they say to never date your heroes. Good advice, but I don't think that's the same. And then you came along, Celeste. You showed me that it's okay to be lost, to feel pathetic, to push on when you have nothing real to offer anyone. I'm not sure where you got all that from, but okay. You held a mirror up to my own doubts and fears and showed me that they aren't everything about me, that I can embrace those things but not be defined by them. You showed me that life after death can be more than just an obsession with revenge and mind-blowing sex on the ground in a dark cave or a dusty old tunnel. Oh my god. Chapter nudges you in his ribs. In the ribs of his elbow. Gross. Clearly appealing to Trapper's better features. It's been a winning strategy for jumping in his ass. Because he seems to be taking it quite well. This whole half-assed dating show parody thing. At first I obviously thought it was a lame idea. What kind of moron thought there was an audience for this? <laughs> Roast to me. But then we spent some time together. And I realized there's something actually real here. I don't want to give up on it. And I don't want to give up on us. Listen, Celeste, while you were knocked unconscious by some minor head trauma like a total weakling, Spirit confided in me that she was, she has real feelings for you. I took it extremely well, naturally, because I trust her and value her opinions. It doesn't mean I trust you. If you want to get to her, you have to get through me first. By passing Trapper's Test, TM, coming to BHVR TV, Sundays at 8pm. Oh lord have mercy. I'm gonna have to save this, aren't I? Don't kill me, I beg. Welcome to Trapper's Test. Answer my questions correctly or die by my blade. God. Question one. What is Spirit's real name? The one given to her by her murderous father, which she only lets her real friends call her. You mean... Oh, frick! Yamai... Rin? I think it's Rin Yamaoka. Okay. Oh, God! Okay, you got that one. Don't celebrate yet. Can I save now? Okay, yes, I can save in between stuff. Okay, we got one right. <laughs> oh, God. Question two. What lives inside spirit? A dragon. She mentions it. A dragon. Sure, everyone knows that. They won't all be easy. <laughs> uh, I just want to be good, man. Question three. Where did spirit work back when she was a normal college girl before she was hell-bent on revenge? She said a restaurant. I know to think I would... I know, to think I would date a waitress. Don't tell my father I ever mingle with help like that. He'd be so disappointed in me. Wait, is he a rich boy? I didn't know that. Question four. What's Spirit's favorite color? Um, she said black. Okay. Are these questions largely superficial? Sure. Maybe I didn't get to know Spirit that well. Maybe that's why she dumped- Maybe that's why it didn't work for us. Who knows? Question five. The final question. Oh god. Oh god, I'm so scared. Oh lord. Have mercy on my soul. You got this, Celeste. According to Spirit, what's worse than being dead? I'm growing parts of having unfinished it. Nothing seems to who you are. When I pitched Trapper's Test to suits at BHVR TV, they told me there was no room in the budget for a new card to be given as the final prize for winning. So I killed them all, right there on the spot. While killing them didn't solve any of the budget problems, it sure did feel good. I'm telling you this, A, to brag, B, to explain why the only thing you're going to win is me saying congratulations for passing Trapper's Test. Not that it was some huge challenge. I mean, the woman obsessed with a giant light that shines in the dark has a chip on her shoulder about being seen. Go figure. You probably guessed, but rules are rules even if I literally just made them up. You got it right. Huh. So I guess I approve you dang spirit or whatever. I never really cared in the first place. I was just hoping you'd slip up and give me a good excuse to wet my blade with your blood. Oh gosh. Oh, quote Star Wars? Um, okay, what's a good Star Wars quote that I can think of off the top of my head? I, from Anakin in, in episode two. I hate sand. It's force, and it gets everywhere. <laughs> or do I... What's another good one? Um, trying to think of another cool one. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, actually, let me save real quick. I have the high ground. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. And then he's like, you underestimate my power. Don't try it. And then he gets slashed. <coughs> maybe I'll find a... Blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'll find a reason tomorrow. For now, you two have fun. Wink, wink. Chop her out. Sorry you had to endure that. What? Five needs the question? It was nothing. Not even that as ridiculous and unnecessary as it was. The whole thing. The waking up in a random tunnel. The overhearing our argument. The news that Trapper and I had something going on. And the stupid quiz. All of it. Especially the whole Trapper out catchphrase. It's only because I actually like you. None of it would have happened if I didn't. And I, I like you too, Spirit. Please call me Rin. Bruh! Rin! We got this! Our love. I didn't really feel like our lighthouse experience was completed. There is something else I wanted to show you. Alone up in the lantern room of the tower? Get your mind out of the gutter, Celeste. It's not that kind of game. What's that? Hold on a moment. I'm getting told no. Wait, it is that kind of game. Disregard the gutter comment. Come back up there with me? There's no place I'd rather be. Oh, frick! Okay, wait. Oh, oh okay. One second. You're excited to return to the lantern room of the lighthouse, despite all the drama and worry that was previously a part of this place for you? Okay. My, my finger is on the trigger just in case something pops up. Okay. Okay. Do I, like, I don't know what to do. I'm, like, scared to move on. I don't want to actually get TOS. More importantly, you're excited to be there with spirit, which makes it all the more crushing. When you're interrupted by the arrival of Clyde Dwight! Gosh dang it! You guys ruined my fun! <laughs> Let me and my wife who rest in peace for like five seconds, please. We're not... Dude, they ruined everything. What the heck, Dwight? Funny seeing you here. Wait, did I say funny? I meant tragic. Tragic? I don't think so. What could be tragic about a family reunion? Those are always joyous occasions in my experience. Before they can explain what's that even supposed to mean, the lighthouse begins to howl a low frightening sound. The lens begins to glow in a now familiar way. You prepare to shield your eyes in case something bad happens to you again. Now isn't the time for your any reality show adjacent shenanigans. Dwight, caught it, shield your eyes. We don't know what the lighthouse will. Oh, probably, because I gotta go to bed because I have a dentist appointment in the morning. Again. <laughs> now, now, please don't interrupt. You'd think of, you'd think after all this time, you'd know that we've got your best interests in mind. Wait, what? No, of course I don't think that. I got wax in yours, friend. I ask you not to interrupt. Too late, the black light flares in the darkness. You see something horrible and strange in the place of Claudette and Dwight. The two ghoulish silhouettes. But before you can focus on them, the light passes and the two survivors are returned to their normal states. That's a little bit sus. That's a little... I'm a little bit scared. What in the hairy hell? Hey, watch the language. You shouldn't speak that way. Around your elders? Wow! Huh. Sir? Um... Uh, I'm gonna save real quick. Just... Because, um... Sir? Grandpa? What? Her, the, the Onis or Grandpa? My little Rin! You're such a woman now, they grow up so fast. Oh, what? Celeste, meet Grandpa Cousin Yamoka. Well, technically not just Grandpa. Technically, he's my great, 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 great Grandpa, but that's a lot of greats to say in a row. I haven't seen my little Rin since I watched over her from the afterlife when she was just a little girl. And I expect you all to say the greats. It's a matter of honor and respect. Except friends, she can do whatever she wants, my precious little angel. But you! Oni stares at you with his demonic red eyes. You're pretty sure even the decorative third eye on his mask is looking at you. You mongrel, you must treat me with respect! Or so help me, I'll be cleaning bits of your head off of my kanabo. A kanabo is like a metal baseball but covered in spikes, FYI. I'm not sure what a peasant like you is doing so close to a descendant of the noble... Yamaoka bloodline in the first place. 
Dirk, buddy, explain what's going on to me. It's Dwight, sir, and Claudette. Remember, we explained to you that you're going to come meet with your great 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 granddaughter sooner and to give for culture approval? Five greats. Great 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 grandfather, sir. Your honor, master, sir. Dwight, he's a samurai, not a judge. Grandpa, they must have summoned you here because they think you have great judgment and because if they summoned my father, I would be too distracted by torturing him for all eternity to continue with the rest of whatever this is. Show, gain, experience. Oh yes, that makes sense. Only a man of my power and magnitude can help. Gosh, what is with this music? It feels like a western. Self-important much? Nice to meet you, cousin. Only my friends and family call me Kazan. Those who tremble in fear in my presence call me Oni. You're seeing a serious resemblance to Trapper, and not only the sheer size of the man that Oni is, but also his attitude. Apparently, Spirit has a type. You sure you can or want to measure up to that? Don't tell me that. Wait a second, maybe you do resemble Oni. Every time you try to look at your own reflection, however, you become dizzy and confused. This definitely deserves more thought, but now's not the time to consider the fact that you might be some kind of hulking vampire with the first ever case of self-blindness. There's a massive samurai mad dog in you from two steps away. <laughs> you buff AF. Well, you don't scare me at all, so I'll stick with Kazan. Peasant! I realize now the true purpose of my visit is to extinguish your light. Oni waves his katana in the air at you menacingly. Like great... Great, 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 great grandfather, like great, 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 great granddaughter, apparently. Hold up there, Grandpa, it's not so fast. You're only supposed to kill them if they deserve it first. You should get to know them a little better. Young people these days always wanting, always waiting to kill people, insisting they must deserve it. Back in my day, you did what needed to be done because your nobility depended on it. In his day, with such an imposing presence, he sure is giving off serious old man yells at cloud vibes. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. You see, when I was a young man, we didn't have foreigners in our land. Didn't need them. We had an abundance of culture already. A little too much, if you ask me, but I didn't make the rules. The rulers did. Exactly how it should be. Literature, art, commerce, theater, fashion, poetry, puppet shows, ghost stories, courtesans, gambling, fighting, fine dining, fast food, public executions. What were we talking about? Spirit giggles at her great great. Okay, I'm not saying all those every time at Oni's forgetfulness. You wonder, does she even like this guy? She sure hates her father, so... Listen up, old man. We don't have time for you to list every activity available to a samurai in the entirety of the Edo period. Edo or Edo? Matthew Maday. Silence, peasant! You're showing your ignorance! Samurai were forbade for many activities that didn't, benef didn't befit the Bushido Code, such as attending certain theatrical performances, for instance. Sometimes, however, a samurai would put on a disguise in order to seek out entertainment. Now I'm not saying I did that because I had honor and a body built like an entire castle that is quite hard to hide. But clearly you have neither my honor nor my physique. You don't even know about the ins and outs of the shifting rules of the traditional Japanese samurai etiquette, you fool. Ren, what would you want with such an uneducated admirer as this? I find it hard to believe that any contemporary person knows all that much about who was and wasn't allowed to do a leisure activities over 100 years ago. However, you're really not sure how to handle this massive, demonic old man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey. Oh wait, I get it. Sweet Rin, my beautiful descendant. You've invited me here to do what you're too kind to do. Bash this jerk's head in. Claude, Doris, fetch my kanabo. Rin, wrap your robe around the mongrel's hands and hold them still. We'll splatter their brains on the beach together as a family. Grandpa, no, that's not why I invited you here at all. In fact, I didn't invite you. Put it and Dwight did. Ha ha ha, yeah, sure. Wink, wink, wink. The whole saying wink, wink out loud thing is getting out of hand. Him and Trapper really do have a lot in common, don't they? I swear Celeste has a good soul on the heart of a warrior. They fought for my love in their own way. Faced down death more than once and put up with their fair share of nonsense. Nonsense, which seems to be endless. Can we, I don't know, wrap this up already? Of course, of course. Who am I to expect anyone to wait around for my approval? I'm gonna save just to be safe. Hanging out as a ghost and watching my bloodline be polluted by cowards and quitters for five generations. Oh, Jesus. Just come give your ancestor-in-law a hug. 
sword drawn only beckons you closer. There's no way he's ever hugged anyone in his outfit. Oh, in his entire life. I think I'm good over here, actually. Rin, now, push them my way and I'll split them in half. The sacrifice of this usurper to the Yam Yamayoka bloodline will surely bring us back to life and set us back on the course of honor. You're so silly, Grandpa. We both know that the only sacrifice can get our family back on track. Revenge on my father, your great-great-great-grandson, traitor to the Yamayoka name. The lust for violence in your voice, it fills me with cheer. I'll never forget who I am. I suppose if this person you want to be with to go on your journey of blood revenge with, I should trust your judgment. The strength inside of you blooms from the same cherry tree that was planted centuries ago by our shared ancestors. And if Celeste ever treats me poorly, you have my word on our family's honor, I will wield my katana and gut them like a fish. I promise not to treat you badly, my queen. A tear rolls down from behind Oni's demonic mask. Oh, look at him, he's crying. You sure you want to marry into this? And one last word of advice, my dear girl. The father stuff, don't forget it. But maybe stop focusing so specifically and obsessively on it. What he did, it was awful, but it was already done. Do something for yourself now. Just my two cents. Be well, Rin. I will see you again soon. Now let's go, servants. Clint and Dennis, return me to the stables. I assume my dragon has been fed and tended to. Um, yes, you sure? I swear this is still better than dealing with Trapper's dad. I'm sorry if I was disrespectful of your great, 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 great grandfather. He seems like a very special man. I realize I will never measure up to someone like that. A warrior with a hell of a fashion sense. I mean, that mask. Don't worry. I would never expect you to. Or want you to, really. If all I wanted was the biggest brute alive, I'd be down in Trapper's cave right now, avoiding his vintage bear traps. That's not the life I've imagined for myself. This sense of abstract duty, anger at a world changing around me, a lust for blood. That's no way to live, and yet as you now know, that is the Yamioka way of life. Forever I'm cursed to battle against the dragon that lives inside me, or at least maybe I was until now. Call me the dragon tamer, baby! Eey! Oh god, cringe. You haven't won this game yet. Please don't ruin it. Sorry, I have no idea where that came from. I think we'd spent enough time in this lantern room. We should get back to the beach. Oh my gosh. The moonlight sets a romantic mood as storm clouds roll in and surround the black lighthouse. You know, the sun might have set, but if we wait long enough, it will rise again. Oh! <gasps> oh my gosh! My queen! My queen! My absolute love of my life! Oh my god! Maybe they based her. She gives very much, um, like, the grudge kind of vibes. <laughs> Spirit removes her sheer robe, showing you her strappy bikini, a strappy black bikini. Her pale skin glows under the light of the moon. Oh my god, my queen, my queen. Oh, we love, we, we, we we're saving. We, we want to revisit this in the future. Look at her. Look at her. Look at all the love and everything. Maybe you could help me get a head start on applying tomorrow's sunscreen. Again, I mean, yeah, of course. Last time was well. I definitely felt more connected to you afterwards. Okay, wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Yo, 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 yo. Is it going to show nudity? I didn't even check. Wait. One second as I search this. To be totally real with you, I kind of just asked you as a goof, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, dead. Was it hooked on? Um, it doesn't have like anything. Oh, okay, Ooh, okay, so it says we're good. It says we're good. It says it says we're fine. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure so I don't get in trouble. The strategic say. <laughs> I swear though, if you tell anyone about this, I will not be labeled a foot freak. Not that there is anything wrong with me. It's just that something about that kind of attention really gets people talking. Study. Steady. Oh, fuck! Oh, no! Okay, huh. No! 
No, no, no. We're redoing this. We're redoing. We're loading that strategic save. <laughs> we have to get it perfect. Okay, we got one. Almost. 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 Why is everything going on weird? Almost. Yes. Almost. 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 Oh no! Close. Oh no! What is happening here, man? <gasps> yes! Almost. Oh! Come on. Almost again. Oh no, missed. Ah. Almost. Ah. Dang it! Almost. Why is the screen getting weird? Hello! Welcome! We're trying to seduce Rin. Oh no! Oh! How long are we gonna do this for? Oh, oh no! This is not going good! close oh my gosh okay oh that was sweet ah! oh my gosh shoot no gosh Bro, I'm not doing well. Oh no, this is not going. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Do I have to read that? Oh no! <laughs> oh gosh! Oh gosh! Oh, have mercy on my soul. Okay. <clears throat> I can't. I can't read this. Oh, oh my goodness. Ah! I'm like, I can't. Oh, give me like five seconds. Oh, in a Barovian accent, too? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you do this to me? Okay, give me a second. Okay, whew, I'm back. Give me, give me a second. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh gosh. I spilled water on myself. <coughs> God, that's so goddamn hot. I love feeling your hand sliding up and down my feet, between my toes. My skin has never been more moist. <laughs> Get up here right now. Before you can find the towel to wipe off your lotion hand, Spirit grabs you and pulls you in close. Her lips lock onto yours. They're surprisingly soft and warm. The sensation is incredible. Clouds cover the moon and you find yourself on the beach with spirits in complete darkness. Hey, we did it! You can feel the narrow straps of her bathing suit come undone and come to life. Snaking through the air, wrapping around your body and lifting you up off your feet. Oh no, have we been murdered? Come here, you. So this is what it feels like to fly. As spirit pulls you close, you feel bits of glass press into your flesh. Pain and pleasure mix and wash over you like the ocean. Salty air stinging your skin as you arrive against your undead lover. Oh my god! The lighthouse howls. In the darkness, you're pretty sure the spirit lets the dragon inside of her take over. 
If he kills you, you're sure it will have all been worth it. The clouds part just as you manage to pull yourself exhausted away from spirit. <laughs> she just gave us a shard of glass. A chunk of broken glass is lodging in your shoulder. When you pluck it from your skin, it drips blood. Sorry, I think this got stuck to me when we were when I was when you know I was having the best night of my life. Spirit drags her fingertips over the sharp end of the glass shard. Keep it. Consider it a memento. I've got plenty more where that came from. Bro, what the frick? They did. <coughs> okay, I'm having a jello break. I need to have some jello after that. Yum. You arrive at the beach to find Claudette and Dwight waiting for you. Oh gosh, what time is it? Now it's the time, Celeste, to face your destiny. Actually, about that. Oh gosh, wait, what happened? Celeste, can we talk privately? Maybe I'm not near, maybe someplace else would be better for this talk. You know how we feel about schedules, Spirit. Very strongly. And you know how I feel about you telling me what to do. Don't do it. Like I said, I'd rather have this talk with Celeste privately. It's not right to do it here in front of everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh, hiccups. You know, from my experience in upper management at my father's mine, I learned that if you're going to fire someone, it's best to do in public so they don't freak out. Please, enough of the fire talk. Wait, you think? No, she couldn't be. They seem so in love. Well, I mean, not really. Spirit is still spirit. Oh god, is she gonna friend zone me? Was I not good? Was I not good? Did I mess up too much? But if I try to imagine spirit in love, I suppose she hasn't attempted to murder Celeste yet, so... Okay, fine. Your guess is as good as mine, really. The girl is very hard to read. Word of advice, though, if you're going to end it, end it quickly. In my experience, the more pathetic the creature, the more annoying the final owls are. I don't need any advice, everyone else, except for Celeste. Did someone to say final howls? That's kind of my whole jam. Can I stay, right? Or, I mean, I can stay, right? Gosh dang it, trickster. You and your freaking... She has too many abs. Especially you. Out. Lame. <laughs> Alone with spirit, you feel something awful hanging in the air. More awful even than the lingering smell of that cleaver body spray. Oh, that gag. I'm gagging. We're all gagging for cleaver body spray. Spirit, Rin, I... I don't know what you plan on saying before you say anything. I just know that I really, really enjoyed my time with you. Getting to know you over the past few days helped me get to know myself. For that, I just wanted to say thank you. That's sweet. You're welcome. And you know what? It's that kind of thing that shows me you've got a good heart inside of you. Too good for me to carve out and toss to the ocean, but also too good for me to love. <laughs> Please! I need someone who shares my interests, someone I can connect with, someone jaded and dispassionate, only driven forth by a desire for revenge. I need someone who isn't so warm that I feel cold in comparison. I need someone who isn't you. Can we just be friends? Frick! What are you doing? I don't know if, before you finish that, just know if we're not friends, we'll probably become enemies and I will destroy you. Friends it is! I'm glad to have you here for me when I need you, but also not too close to me when I don't. So yeah, I'll see you around. Spirit starts to leave. Wait, what? That's it? That's how this ends? You're just leaving me here? Not sure I'd use the words end. And for that matter, I wouldn't say that I'm leaving. But us? We're definitely through. The fact that you can't see that, well, it just proves that we never really belong together anyhow. Good night, Celeste. What the hell? I just spent all this time on the side doing everything I can to get to know you only to be told that I should just leave the chocolate factory through the side door. I don't know what that means. Anyway, I said goodnight, Celeste. See you around. Bruh. Jeez, I'm sorry. What a bummer. Hey, why'd she keep saying she'll see me around? Gosh, I have no idea. Oh. And so my precious killers live happily ever after, as they should, learning to love themselves first and foremost. Well, it's trapped in a never-ending cycle of torture of my son. Wait, did I just spoil my true identity? You made it this far, you should probably know that. But you'll have to play again to find out more! The 
Goodbye, Celeste. See you again. Later and again and again and again. Forever! Dang! So we played through her route, but we got friend zoned. Ah! What did we do wrong? The music's really good, though. <laughs> I can't believe that. We got friend zoned. That was fun, though. I'm curious what I picked that was not good. Yeah. I kind of assumed the ocean was the entity. I think so. I'm curious about the trapper thing too. I'll try and figure out what we did wrong and come back next time <laughs> and play through. Were we too nice? <laughs> Let's go through the credits. Maybe there's an ending scene. Dude, the guitar. The art style kind of reminds me of, um, the style that they used for, what was it? The, the Kentucky Fried Chicken Dating Simulator? Is there a way to succeed? It would be very fitting to forever keep trying to see only to be brought back to the beginning. I'm thinking there's a way. I think you can get friend zone and you can reach love or you can be murdered. <laughs> and also trapper, not trapper, um, trickster is the secret ending and then there's also supposedly an ending on like how to escape the island i guess very weird very strange i very much want to get her ending though if there is another one you need to find out find out now it's all good i know a lot of people were playing it on youtube so uh yeah i would definitely watch a playthrough on there if, if y'all want to go see how, how it ends. All of the endings. That was fun. Wow. That was almost four hours of gameplay. Pretty good. And that's only one route. So, pretty crazy. Tools, the fonts. Oh, fonts. Jeez Louise. Software. Thank you for playing. The music in this game is pretty good. Oh. Ah, we're back at the beginning. Okay, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming to the stream tonight. Let's see if there's anyone we can raid right now. Anyone I know streaming? That was very much fun. <laughs> Glad got to work home time. <laughs> yeah it was it was a lot of fun okay let's see who who should we raid oh owl the moon i think is is playing so let's raid her um do, do, do. raid channel They're in just chanting right now. Ooh, they're gonna be starting soon. I think they just started. How do you become a VIP? <laughs> if you come to enough streams, I'll make you a VIP. But anyways, let's start the raid. Remember everyone, be be nice. Be kind. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun tonight. I'm hopefully I'm gonna be able to stream tomorrow. Keep in mind I do have a dentist appointment and it takes a lot of energy out of me, man. Gosh. But yeah. Yes, I'm gonna start streaming at, at um at 9 a.m. Not 9 a.m. 9 p.m. every night now. Except for on days where I have D&D. &D. I gotta start later. But anyways, good night, everyone. Have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, and good night. Have fun! Bye!